Welcome to Prime, Primecast, episode number 70. My name is Jesse. My name is Wyatt. And my name is Andrew. Welcome everyone. Um, first episode seems like in a while since, um, I mean, since we've had everyone here, hopefully no hiccups, so Jesse doesn't <laughs> have to do much editing throughout the show because I don't like it. I don't like editing through specific parts during the show. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Uh, I think um, there's not a whole lot of real news to be talking about this episode, but I think we have a good discussion uh, topic uh, for the episode. I think Andrew might be kind of in the dark about this, and I apologize for that in advance, but we'll be talking about something later on, but First, we always had to talk about our uh, recent purchases within the past week. Anyone specifically want to go first? I don't care. Andrew? Yeah, I think you can go, go first. Go ahead, Wyatt. Um, okay. Uh, I got... I know I got two things, but I can only really recall one thing. Um... <laughs> Oh well. I hate that. I hate that when you know you got something, but you can't think of it. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, I remember what the other thing was. Um, I um, I got word that the uh, so uh, the Walking Dead series four is releasing pretty much any day now. I've heard. Mm, I've heard. Yeah. I've heard. Is that is that including the Daryl and Meryl two pack? Uh, kind of. Same same oh, okay. date, but they're not part of series four. Or they're just re- it, yeah, they're just just recent releasing alongside of it. Mm-hmm. Series four gotcha. is uh, the well. Well, first, really quick. Um, series four is gonna be dropping any time. I've heard dates from like September sixteenth to late September to maybe even October, and I really it's hope gonna be dropping. Yeah, I really. I'm waiting. Like, any what day. You, Macy? Hmm? Macy Great promoting her new record. Yo, my new record drops May eighth. Uh, check out my mixtape drops, <laughs> drops May eighth. Um, that's something that's always bothered me about hip hop artists is that they refer to release dates as drop dates. Uh, drop that's release. always annoying to me. Yeah. All right, go on. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, and I, th- I was looking at some official pictures one day, and I saw a figure that I was thought I was like, um, that came out a long time ago. And it was Rick. There's a figure of Rick. Uh, it's the same figure as Wave Two, and I saw it was being re-released in Wave Four as an exclusive. And what's funny is I don't remember the dis- the distributor's name, but it's being released as an exclusive to a specific distributor. And so apparently the one store, the one um, retail store that's getting it is Walgreens. It's it's the same figure from uh, t- the TV series one. Uh, it's TV series wave two. It's the one with the white shirt and the deputy hat. Oh, okay. this one doesn't okay. come with the hat. The hat does okay. come with Carl though. All right. Yeah, that that uh wave one deputy Rick James. Rick. That's going for that's going for Rick Grimes. I mean Rick <laughs> Grimes. Rick James. I'm Rick James. Bitch. Aw. it's going for like oh, easily like between two and three hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's a wave it's, one Daryl, and that figure looks like. Jeez, that. and and especially after seeing how small these figures are in person, mm-hmm. that's retarded. Mm-hmm. I was expecting like a six inch like Marvel Legends scale figure on the size on these but these are like just the like a tad bit big tall. yeah these are just an like inch bigger than marvel universe I had figures no idea they're that popular wow. i know right but in the de- in the daryl is going for and this is just off like uh black or not black market aftermarket prices it's you going for drinking. i told you i'm not lying i i know <laughs> kool aid <laughs> yeah but I was Proof is in the blood toxicity level. Shit. I don't know, but the one, the Daryl I saw somewhere was between three or four hundred dollars. Oh, yeah. Like I, I had to like, and especially after you saw, showed me how derpy that figure looks. Mm-hmm. That's retarded. <laughs> I, I would be glad to to pay twenty five dollars for a set and have it signed by the oh. actors. Oh, this ten inch Daryl looks really cool. Oh though. yes, that one's sweet. Yeah. Okay. Go on with your, with your uh, story. Yeah, I I went to I went around to three Walgreens and 
uh, the last one had him. Because apparently each Walgreens is initially getting two. It's just two to a case. And uh -huh. they had two. And I picked up both. Because a friend here, he goes to this. Did you say Walgreens? Yes. Weird. Walgreens. Walgreens doesn't even carry the main line. They don't carry the comic series or the TV series. They never have. So why they're carrying this exclusive, that's the that's the part that gets me. Not How the much are they asking Walgreens. for it? weird. Oh, uh, cheaper than BBTS. Really? I, I went up there and I was expecting like you know maybe eighteen dollars because Walgreens is kind of stupid overpriced. Exactly. Yeah. And the lady's like, no, they're tw they're twelve ninety nine. I was like, yeah. give me both. Picked one up for a friend. Sold. I kind of want a second one to open, and this one because I want to, I want to get. I don't know. I want to get a second one and kind of customize that one, kind of like I did the Avengers Loki. Add some long hair in the uh -huh. in the back because this has short hair, like she, uh, series two. Rick and, right. and season two. Um, I want like a season three Rick, longer hair in the back, kind of scraggly looking. So you want one that's crazy? Yeah. And Give him sees and sees stuff and talks to trees in the woods. He doesn't talk to trees. He talks to ghosts. <laughs> he talks. He talks to trees. He talk to trees. He might as well. He might as well been like hugging and kissing that tree. Kissing that tree. <laughs> He's actually not seeing Lori's ghost. Like he like Herschel should should have found him like shacked up naked with a tree. <laughs> He's like, shut up! But yeah, I got that. Is that it? Oh, I got one more thing. Oh, okay. I saw a deal. I had to What else? I saw a deal on Facebook, and I had to delve into some money because I would... It was that situation of, I'll never find it for that price again. Um, so, my, my affinity with Spider-Man... Um, have I ever told you how much I wanted the Future Foundation Marvel Legends Spider-Man figure? Uh, you might have, but I'm, I don't recall. Well, I did, because I really did want it. But, I only ever saw it going for, like, 60 to 70 bucks. And I was like, nope. Let me see this shit. Marvel Legends. Future Foundation Spider-Man. A uh, guy on Future. Facebook was selling for loose 25 bucks shipped. Oh, uh, white with black? Yes. Oh, it's, it's part of the new wave. Well, okay, I've, say, I've seen that before. Or part of the Return of Marvel Legends line. Oh yeah, not the old one. No, Future Foundation. Okay, is okay. As old as the old line, yeah. Oh, I've heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, it, it goes. It's a variant, so it goes for. And I already had Big Time Spider Man, which it's a variant of, and I had. I already have that figure, but I saw Future Foundation for twenty five bucks, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then you find that off of Facebook. Mm -hmm. Damn. I'm part of some action figure groups on there. Oh. Wasn't the only good price figure that he had. I really wanted to, to buy a couple more from him. He had a Magneto, I think a Wave one or two Magneto from the original Toy Biz Marvel Legends for thirteen bucks. I was like, I want it, but as soon as I got Spidey, that sold. I was like, okay, I don't I don't have to get that now. I don't like that big time Spider Man. It looks weird. The mold or the figure itself? The figure itself. I like the the uh, Future Foundation one, but the big time is just too too obscure for me. Mm. I like them both just fine, but I like I probably like Future Foundation more. I I like the Future Foundation one because it's like a negative yeah. of himself kind of. Um, Anti Venom. Yeah, kind of. Uh, is that is that it for you? Yes. Andrew, you you never. I you got. Uh, I finally found Joker for the uh, classic Batman 1966. Oh, yep. you did? I haven't seen any of those classic They're hard Batman to find. figures in stores yet. I'm thinking about really uh, hard. Getting, getting the Batman and Robin 2-pack off of BBTS. Mm -hmm. It's. But I'm not sure. It's kind of a weak set. Yeah. Is it? But what sucks is that's the only way you can get Robin. Yeah, I know. I know. Bastards. Mattel jerks. And I got uh, from... Uh, big lots of all places. Vehicle for eight bucks. Yeah, big lots is messed up. Like they had, I, I, I saw uh, the Prid Arachnid, or uh, not Arachnid, Arachnid, Arachnid. Yeah, Arachnid for the first time ever in stores. I had never seen the American Arachnid in Target or Walmart. Never saw her, but until we went to Big Lots. Some time ago, and I saw like five of them, and they were going for yeah. eight bucks. You bought them all, right? No, no, <laughs> not no, not no, worth no. eight bucks even. No, no, there, no. But no, no, no. 
I, I got I got that uh, Arms Micron one, and that's way more than enough for me. Oh, you got the Arms Micron Arachna, didn't you? That was the that was the only way I could get that figure. Sucker. Yeah. Yeah, but the Micron is worth it. The Micron is really cool. It is really cool. I've seen Arms Micron Arachnid at conventions. I'm just like, nope. Yeah, pass. Nope, there's no it's, way. It, it doesn't help the core figure, though. I tried to like it, but... Yeah. I've been <laughs> I, I've been at conventions, and I had to pass on, like... That's not the only Arms Micron figure I've seen at conventions. I saw, like, mm -hmm. the... I saw Leo Prime. I saw Silas Breakdown I had to pass on. Passed on Viacons, Smokescreen. You I, passed on Viacons? That would be hard. I passed on Arms Micron Viacons. You're like a Viacon whore. I passed on. All right. Passed on um, Smokescreen before we even knew he wasn't coming out in the states. Oh yeah. The only one that I said I would buy if I saw it in person was Ironhide, and they didn't have him. And they wanted, I think, eighty bucks for Silas. But what? They had. They had that. That same booth had other Tokyo stuff I wanted. You can buy Silas Breakdown for sixty five. Mm hmm Yeah, it's like just average price now. That's crazy. Really it's not that hard to find yeah. really. The regular breakdown though huh. is non existent. Nope, that's it. Okay. So that's uh, my second Big Lots Vicon purchase and then I'm saving my money. Like you were gonna say that's that's what else I found at Big Lots. I found an Arms Micron Breakdown. And oh, yeah. I found that, yeah, <laughs> three of them. Yeah. But, uh, How the hell would that happen? I'm, three of them. I'm saving my money. Three dollars on clearance. Huh. I'm saving my money because I'm Make going on box. a convention this weekend. So. Where? Paracon. Is that the Power Rangers one? The, no, it's the uh, <laughs> Masters of the Universe, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Thundercats convention. Oh, that's right. That one's Power Morphicon. Well, that's dumb. Have fun. Ah. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I am uh, next weekend. I'm hopefully going to, to uh, Cincinnati uh, Comic Expo. In two weeks, I'm going to. Um, but why uh, won't come down? Middle Ohio Comic. I have this already planned, and I have other. I'm sorry. Hey, you're the one who's a grown adult with a car and just a new car you just bought. Why don't you come up to Columbus for this convention and meet some Walking Dead actors? Actors. I will if you come down to Cincinnati. I can't. Well, then, that's where the predicament is. Oh, huh? well, then I guess. No, no, I just. Sorry, man. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh huh. Uh. Well, Andrew, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he got Viacom. A another Viacom. Oh, okay. At Big Lots. Just a. Yeah, I guess I'm still in the swing yeah. of calling it Odd Lots. Everyone's like, what the fuck is an Odd Lots? Like, uh, Why do you call it Odd, odd Lots? Stuff. The, sto the store used to be called Odd Lots. Did it? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, so I called it Odd Lots. It like, it's what always Big Lots of me. Really? Yeah. I don't know how long ago they changed it, but my my parents always call it Odd Lots, and I know I'm wrong, but I'm just like, Odd Lots. And everyone's like, what? I'm like, Big Lots. Big Lots before is Big Lots. Is it like Hardee's and uh, Carl's Jr.? Kind of, but those have well, kind of. And uh, have you do you know what rallies is? Rallies yeah. and checkers. Uh, I know rallies. Rallies is yeah. here in Cincinnati. Yeah, we have rallies here on this side of the country, and I think Andrew, Andrew, do you have a checkers restaurant near you? No. You ever seen nope. one? You're wrong. No. Oh. <laughs> he lives in like in the middle of nowhere. He has no I'm idea. Deep what in the woods. The outside yeah. life. Do you do you like raise your own? <laughs> yep, I got my own livestock in the back. Livestock. Yep. Do you, do you make your I own do. gravy? <laughs> Churn my own butter. <laughs> nice, nice. Up and down. I got a few things uh, in the past week. Uh, finally uh, got uh, Generations Voyager Blitzwing. Talk about it. He's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just has a... He has a one odd quirk that I just can't stand though, and it's the odd quirk that everyone's talked about in arms. Yeah, it's just damn shoulders. I mean, they just don't stay in place at all. So, are you sure that your wife does not own a nail file or an emery board of any kind? I had never heard of a nail file nail filer referred to as an emery board before in my entire life. So, uh, she does have a nail filer somewhere, just in the process of moving. I have no idea where it's at. You yes, I am. Going to, uh, I'm yeah. I have something laying around, and I am going to fix it because that is yeah. annoying. Do you know how to fix the it? 
Yeah, okay. I watched a video to do the take out five screws in a bag and you just file down these four pieces of plastic and put it together and mm -hmm. test it and whatnot and yeah. Smooth it out. Uh, the nose cone is fairly decent on mine. Mine, it mine's fine. I've seen some ones that have like a gigantic gap. Mine's okay. Yeah, mine's is I've mine's actually fairly tight. It's it's pretty it's pretty tight. Yeah, though, mine is it. too. But it, it once it's in there, it's pretty good, you know. But yeah, I really like it. I think the 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 face changing gimmick is well much more improved over the animated version because on the animated one you couldn't really turn the head without it like being like an intermittent face or anything like that. I th I kind of think I don't know. I kind of disagree because I think this one has some clutchy, really some kludgy plastic. It's harder to turn the faces. Oh, it's pretty easy Same to here. find. Yep. Like. Yeah, you you might just have a little like spur of plastic on yours yeah. that's like getting in the way yeah, or something. Maybe. Yeah, it's turns no problem. Might um, the one thing I the other kind of thing that d really bothers me is on in jet mode. I might be doing something wrong, but the legs do not want to be stay pegged in at all. Mine did on like the first two transformations. After that, nope. I don't want to. Yeah, mine still don't. Like, nope. this is like, the, the there's a peg on the leg that pegs up underneath the, the tail fin. Will not stay pegged in on either side. That's the only other th problem I have with it. Other than that, it's really cool. I like it a lot. Makes me want to get Springer now. The thing with Blitzwing is yep. everything has to be in place perfectly for everything to stay together. Mm -hmm. At least with mine. No, that's everyone's, yeah. Alright. And I got my first Star Wars figure in at least a few years. At least probably about five years or something. I got the Star Wars Black Series 6-inch Darth Maul. I had a friend who was going to get that, and then he put it... Or actually, no, I think he did buy it. I just wanted to play with it. He's really, really cool. Is he? Yeah, he's really fun to play, play around with. The only couple of things I think they could have approved upon is I like um he has two heads. One head that's molded into the hood mm -hmm. on the on the cape and the other head that's for uh, you know, without the hood. The face looks exactly the same. I think they, they would have made it a little bit cooler if they had just a standalone head, like giving him his like angry fighting face. Yeah. I think that would have been a little bit better vari variation, and especially when you have the head that has the the hood on, mm -hmm. he's very difficult to stand up, because his feet look very similar to Avengers six inch Captain America's, where it is like not a flat part on them. Yeah. And but the, he has holes in his feet, and with that box, they could have easily like put in like a a little piece of plastic to act as a base with his name on it. Cost him basically nothing. You know, but like it was just begging to have some sort of like cheap stand, but it doesn't have one, so it's kind of difficult to stand up. Awesome. But once, but like, but if you have the just a standalone head, he's pretty easy to stand up. Um, hips are just a tad bit loose, but other than that, it's all real go cool, really good. Real I'm cool. really looking forward to the rest of the six inch line. Um, like in wave three. I think they have episode three Obi Wan Kenobi coming out. I'll be interested in that one. I'm um, and that's and that's all that's really uh been announced it, so far. Wave two. Part one, of two, me. And three. I'm not quite gone. Really wants to get. Part of me really wants to get whole hog into this line because when I hear oh a new Star Wars line, I could be completest on this. Because mm -hmm. I used to be like that with Star Wars. Um, I want to, but because of recent scenarios in my life. I have to really cut down on collecting. I have, mm -hmm. I'm at that point. I have too much shit. Well, I don't need all this. Especially with Star I, I Wars. Don't need it all, so. If you're gonna be completist with that, it's yeah. the kiss of death. I don't. I don't care. I don't care about um, X-wing Luke. I already have figures of that. Yeah. Small. Yeah. I don't yeah. need another stormtrooper or sand trooper. I don't. Right. I kind of. I'm only that, gonna be. I kind of want that. I'm R2. only gonna be. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's good. I I kind of want that R2 just for you know. Bummer. Twenty bucks though for that R two yeah. is fucking retarded. I want Episode three Obi Wan. I want Episode three mm -hmm. Anakin. Uh, if they make mm -hmm. a Darth mm -hmm. Vader, sure. Mm -hmm. Yoda sure. and uh, Yo I'd buy a Yoda. Uh -huh. Like I'd buy key characters. I think there's only yes. a couple obscure characters I might buy. Like I don't know that Greedo. Boba cool. Boba Fett. I'd buy the fuck out of some Boba Fett, but 
I'm sure the uh, uh, Boba Fett is getting a release. I just don't know when. Yeah, he's in Wave Two. He's going to be hard to find just because he's Boba Fett. The character that is cool just because he looks cool. Wyatt. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if you we lost you there for a second. Nope. Um, yeah, I was, I'm pretty much on the same basis of these six-inch uh, Star Wars figures. I really only want uh, Sith or Jedi uh, characters in in their uh, Force gear. Like, I'm not interested in, in a Episode f- Four uh, Luke Skywalker. I would like a Episode Six Skywalker in his black Jedi Knight costume. I I would I wouldn't mind an Episode Four Luke, and I would not mind a Bespin Luke. I'll Best when Luke is coming out in yeah, Wave I like two. that one. Okay, that might that might be my Luke because Best one's cool. Every time they've done a uh, an episode six Luke, it's, the body's come out good. I never like the head sculpt. I think it looks too mm-hmm. groomed. Cause you know how Luke kind of looked. A, he tried to look a little bit more proper in episode six. Um, so his hair's all pushed to the side. I hate how most of those mm-hmm. figures look though. I know that's how I looked in the movie. I just I don't know. I, 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 but every single episode one specific Luke that they've made I think has come out pretty good then like if they made a, a General Grievous that's the only other one that I'd oh be God. willing to jump on I like Grievous I do too and like I, what I, I, I'm i very specific like if I, I want a Darth Vader but I want it to be pre-cyborg so basically episode 3 Anakin Vader but with Sith eyes you said Anakin Vader <laughs> He's got things for you, Wyatt. That's a second. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, well, okay, that okay, that's a problem I have. I hate it. I really don't like it. Really, really what? don't like it. You don't like, like pre cyborg Darth Vader? No, no, no. Let me finish my sentence. I don't like it. Oh, <laughs> like what? Like what? You don't like what? Oh my god! I don't like it when they will make okay. they'll make a Anakin Skywalker figure. All right, and they'll make him angry eyes, and they name him Darth Vader. I don't like it when there's an Anakin Skywalker with Darth Vader written on the box. I get it. He's he's supposed to be Darth Vader at that point, but I don't know. It's I, it's I think it it's things. I like yeah, it. I like true. that though. I like it in the movie. I think it's great. I think it's great, you know, fictional wise when they call him Darth Vader before he actually has the suit. I think that's mm-hmm. great. But I don't know. I re- when I saw episode 3 in theaters, someone behind me was so confused by that. What, did they call him Darth Vader now? I don't yeah. understand. Did he not know Anakin? <laughs> he must have been so surprised at the end when he was like, Oh, that guy's Darth Vader! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> he didn't know that. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Are we watching Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was Star Trek. Damn. <laughs> oh my god! That's the Star Wars guy! <laughs> this is the best Superman movie ever! <laughs> just Billy, sit down. God, I, guys, I'm so sorry. Anyone who can hear my voice, I am so sorry. Please forgive him. Please He's high on candy. It's okay. I'm, I'm so sorry for this. I'm, I'm gonna. When he gets home, he's, he's dead. I'm just gonna do Anakin it. Anakin Vader sounds natural to me now. Anakin Skywalker just sounds awkward. Yeah, because there's, there's more. Too many, too many syllables. Yeah. Too many syllables. Anakin Skywalker. That's six. Syllabus. Luke Skywalker. Too many syllabus. S- syllabus. Syllabus. Diabetes. Um. Yeah. He's. I love Darth Maul. I. I really. Oh. I hope they make a Count Dooku. Gotta hate that I, name. Uh. Dar- Darth. Darth. Darth Tyrannus. No. He. No. He's not Darth, Darth Sidious. Sidious. No. He's not Darth Sidious. Um. He. No. Darth Tyrannus. Tyrannus. Is he Tyrannus is or Count is Dooku. he is he Darth uh Count Dooku is Darth Tyrannus. Is he? Who is yes. who's Tritius? Uh I don't know. Okay. Let me look this up. Maybe I'm confused. Darth Do I remember right before Tritius? Dooku died he became Darth. But they never said it in the movie. Darth there's I don't see it. There's a Darth Sidious. I might be wrong. Which which is uh you know, uh, Emperor Pal Palpatine. Palpatine, Palpatine, Palpatine. Darth. Well, what? Who was um? Darth. Um, who was the one that Darth Sidious told the story about? Uh that that was his mentor. Yeah, yeah, that obviously. Was. Um, I just looked this up yesterday. I have no idea. I can't think of his name. Darth Sidious is. Star Wars fans are screaming at us right now. Yeah, like oh my and god! I'm a Star it's Wars obviously. Fan. It's literally just slipped my mind. That's all. 
because I, I I remember in my head I broke it all down like um so that guy taught Sidious or wait hold on That guy taught Sidious. Then Yoda comes in. Yoda taught Dooku. Dooku caught, taught Qui Gon. Qui Gon taught Obi Wan. Obi Wan taught Anakin. Anakin taught Ahsoka. Ahsoka almost died. And then Dooku stopped. taught Qui Gon. Yes. I did not know that. At least I'm pretty sure that's how I've connected it because I. Uh, yeah. What is he the count of anyway? Dooku's. <laughs> Chocula. You know I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> They're playing it sucks. <laughs> welcome to the planet. Welcome to the planet, Dooku. I'm the count. <laughs> the, my Dukonians. Dukonians. Like I was telling, I was telling um Andrew yesterday, before we were waiting on you. I know that they're just trying to like play, play, uh, pay homage to the fact that he was the. Dracula in the Hammer films, and they they obviously did that with the Count, but I th- I think they could have chosen a lot of a, a much better name than Dooku. Like I just came up with like off the off the top of my head, like uh they could have named him Count Alucard, which is Dracula back or backwards. He's also a Helsing character. Yep. Yeah. So I mean that could that could be like a mishmash of both Universal and that would have been a little cool too. Yeah. Oh well. Dooku. Oh, we got Dooku instead. Count Alucard, but Count Alucard would have been too in your face about what it is. Yeah, but still, they no have one knows Christopher what a Dooku Lee. is. I'm sure someone knows what a Dooku is. I bet someone. No, like, not you not every not everyone knows what Aluc- Alucard is. Yeah, I don't know. It just sounds too cool. Only Aluc- only people that know what Alucard is are people that. Watch Son of Dracula in the late '30s, and people that played uh, Castlevania Sympathy in the night on PlayStation, and watched Helsing. Yeah, but who watched that? I watched some of it. I never finished it. I said I was gonna finish reading it, and I never did. No. Um. Did you get anything else? Um. I got uh, just uh, incredible. The Incredible Hulk on Blu-ray, and that's it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, for four bucks at a pawn shop. I I did get a DVD. I got Kick Ass for five bucks. Oh, that's so Sweet. worth it. I know. I was like, I'm not, I'm not walking away without this. Um, okay. So, let's get our one news item out of the way, because I kind of uh, just want to say how cool it is. All right. So, Masterpiece Sound Blaster is happening. Yes. Talk yes. About it, I pre I pre the shit awesome out of that. I probably won't be getting it. Probably won't be able to afford to be getting it, but I like it. And you already have a sound wave, so you yeah, don't need to be I getting want the, it. I, want, I think the colors look really pretty, though, mm-hmm. and I yeah. like that rat bat. Yeah. So hopefully they yeah. release that rat bat in a way I can I can get it for not too much money. If if you'd be willing to, I don't care about rat bat. If you want, I'll trade you a rat bat. Trade? Like? Yeah. For another one of your one, For one of your cassettes. I kind of like all my cassettes, though. Okay, Andrew. You have three fucking or two fucking masterpiece laser beaks. Wait, you can what spare the f- one. Yeah, what the fuck, Andrew? <laughs> I'll trade you my rap bat for my future rap bat for one of your laser beaks. But I've just got it on pre order. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You're such a glut. I know. I'll um a glut a But glut. let me ask I'll you something. From you it. won't pay hundred and twenty bucks for Choice of Rust sound sound wave, but you'll pay can't or won't. 160 for the Sound Blaster? Can't or won't. You won't? There's a difference. Won't, won't I mean, as won't as in it's readily available. Well, you me. said you won't buy it. I said <sighs> I can't. Hey, Jesse. Yeah. I'll, um, that means absolutely impossible. That's right true. Now. I, um, I'll buy the Rat Bat from you if you're interested. Don't tell me right now. It comes out. In but the then I'll leave me cassetteless. Uh, you can buy actually Hasbro singles on eBay for like twenty bucks. I could buy you one of those and then trade. Deal. Okay. We'll see laser how this beak. goes in a few months. You know, laser laser beak? Really? Yeah. Yes. Yes. He's my. He's the. He's the only cassette I really like. He is the best one. Yeah. Is he? Yes. Mm. I haven't, I've ne- I haven't, I haven't seen any reviews. You should at least on get Rumble for his cassettes. If I cared, if I cared, I would do it. I would do reviews. You know, I realized the other day I was like, I'm gonna stop making myself do videos when I don't want to because I don't find them that fun right now, and haven't for a that, while. That's good. That's good. If they, if they ever stop being fun, 
Yeah. Don't do them. Yeah, it feels like a chore, and I'm just like, nope. Uh, I'm yeah. I got. I only show, do. I, I only Twitter. do videos when I really like it. When I really like to do them. Or when I'm in the mood to. Oh gosh. Um. What was the news? I oh yeah, the news I have Sound Blaster. Yeah, I've I've always been more keen to uh, Sound Blaster than Soundwave. I don't know, just because. I like he's from Headmasters and Headmasters is my favorite uh, Japanese G1 series. And plus, it's he's kind of notorious for being referred to as New Soundwave in one of the poor English dubs. Laser beaks for thirty bucks on eBay. So, right. What about uh, Ravage? Masterpiece. Rumble's pretty good. Ravage. Wait, which color Rumble? Blue. The real rumble. There you go. The there real you, rumble. Uh, Ravage is twenty-five. What about Buzzsaw? Oh my god! Give it up there. La man. Last one. I'm checking. Last one. Okay. I got. I got stuff to do after this. Uh, Buzzsaw twenty-two. Okay. I don't even accept Buzzsaw because Buzzsaw is what he, what came with mm -hmm. the original yeah, uh, sound wave. So we'll we'll talk we'll talk, we'll talk about it. I eat. Um, when the time comes. That's the only real news thing that stuck out to me. Is there anything else? No, news has been super weak recently. Well, right. you got the G two so, sideswipe, but we already know about that. Oh, yeah, that is cares? something. That thing looks pretty as all hell, and I kind of want it. But I th I'm not getting I, it. I think it looks dumb. I think it looks nice. I think I think the amount of detail and the amount of like kind of love that went into that is is. I can see it. I can read those. I can see that outline. I like it. I won't be getting it, but I like it. He comes with extra that, accessories. That's going to be my deal for the next while. That's going to be my thing for the next I while. like it, but I won't be getting it. I, I can't. I I can't do this anymore. I can collect. You're getting too old, You're yeah. getting too old for this shit. I'm at that point where like I have I have other priorities that I want to deal with in my life, and when things show themselves, I should deal with that. I shouldn't be buying all these toys. I need I need to like get to that state where things are really cool to me, but I can admire them from afar. I don't need to complete build of figures. I don't I don't need to get every single figure in a wave. Mm -hmm. I I think maybe trail cutter and hoist. Well that's how I am too. Those would be my, Just get what you really my want. My generations. I want this I still figures. there's still a bunch of trail cutters. On my target. Didn't you need that Marvel Legends Thor? I didn't need it. Oh, Andrew Marvel. needed it. I already have Did them. you? The Marvel Legends Hmm. Yeah, he got it. He he flying. wanted. He, he I, I uh. It was on my target, or was at least. I don't yeah, I it was on my target for the longest time until Andrew said that he needed it. and I was going to pick it up for him, but then that day apparently someone bought it Fuck. or stole it. Stole it. Um, <laughs> I want hoist really bad. Okay, so uh, outside of obligation. Oh wait, wait, wait! There oh, is one oh. Transformers Four news that I do think we should uh oh, bring the up. Yeah. So. Yeah, I forgot about that. I just don't care. Um, bring it up, Jesse. Uh, which one are you thinking? I'm thinking of the title. That's kind of, no, it's not the title Ooh, I'm thinking about. What are you about. talking about then? The review, the possible return of a certain character. Oh, is his name Egatron? Yeah, that's just which I'm calling major bullshit on. I'm calling. <laughs> I'm calling. I bet it'll happen, and I really won't like it. I mean, I'm calling. I'm not saying bullshit. That's not going to happen. It's bullshit. That I is mean, we do have Galvatron yeah, guys. Fucking... You know, use him. Nope, he doesn't I exist mean, anymore. But... Ever since his universe no. toy. Nope. Oh. Nope, he, uh, you know what I also died, heard? Actually, he the retired. Dinobots will be in the movie. But... He, okay. Wow. If, yeah. If I kept, I sent out so many tweets about that. Like, <laughs> guys, we get it. The Dinobots are in the movie. I know. Stop being, being cagey about it. Stop. Stop, stop being so blase about it. We get it. We know they're in the movie. Shut up. And then finally they're like, oh, Dinobots. And I kind of made fun of some people. And I was like, oh my god. Damn you people. Dinobots. I can't believe it. I followed up with like... Anyway, the actually. title. The title of Transformers 4 is... Who gives a fuck? Age of, Age of Extinction. Age of Extinction. Which I think is funny because Dinobots. It's not an I don't age. Like oh, I, I guess it kind of makes sense. I think it should have been Dark of the Moon, where like the grammar threw some people off, and it was just like Age Extinction. <laughs> <laughs> age A Extinction. Age A. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Written by Grimlock. Yeah. <laughs> extinction. Extinction of ages. Oh, oh well. It, I don't know, but I I just know that I'm not watching movie trailers anymore. I um. Because the uh, they they just ruin movies for me. Did you see? The I can't Robocop appreciate. Trailer? I can't. No. I I did. It didn't look bad. But I what? mean, I'll I'll be more than happy to listen to someone talk about what they saw in the trailer. But I just visually cannot connect with the trailer anymore because all I do, like, especially in action or comedies, they show all that good stuff in trailers, and then when they see the movies, like, seen it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I hate, all, I hate I, when they put all the funny parts of a movie. Yeah. That was one thing I thought that was gonna happen with This Is the End because I was so excited for that comedy. But mm-hmm. apparently in, like, We're the Millers, all the funny parts are in the trailer. And there are some really awkward parts in that movie. There's some really Yes, they were. Awkward. They were. Did you see it? I, I, yeah, I saw it I, I walked weekend. into the theater and saw the part where the son's making out with the mom and the daughter. <laughs> yes, that was really fucking awkward. Yeah. Like, that was funny, though. One day I was at work, my girlfriend went to go see it. And she walked out and she's like, yeah, you know, all the funny parts are pretty much in the trailers. And, like, mm. he got bit in the balls by a spider, and that was really awkward just to watch. It was just this gr- kind of gratuitous as flashing shots of his penis in there. Spoiler alert for Where the Millers, if you care. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, Robocop trailer wasn't bad. I say check it out. I mean, the concept of it looks really cool, and the way they're depicting it, like, it has Gary Oldman and Samuel L. Jackson in it, so I'm just like, okay. Really? Yes. Hmm. Who are they playing? I don't know. Characters. I'm not Robocop oh. aficionado. Oh, I love, 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 love the first Robocop movie. It's great. And they released a, a <laughs> second. They released a second trailer for Thor, and I ooh, want the second trailer came out a while ago. I know, but it came oh, okay. a month ago. But still, it was so nice. That was a good trailer. Oh, I I, I, st- I still do not give a shit about the new Thor movie so far. I I kind of do. Um, we got also got standees and at work a Loki and a Thor, and I don't know which one I want. And, um, so, another quick thing, I forgot about this, I did get this, I told Jesse about it. So at work, I was up at the little guest services counter, and I was looking through posters that were about to be put in our glass case, uh, outside and inside the building, and I saw one, and I was like, what the, I saw the metal, I was like, what the fuck is that? I unraveled it, and I saw, like, a little bit more, I was like, oh, fucking shit, and I, like, quickly unraveled the whole thing. And it's Captain America Shield, and it said four four fourteen. I was like, oh god! And I threw it down, and I ran in the back, and I was looking at the poster boxes, and <laughs> I saw C A T. I saw C A T W S, and I was like, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. I opened that up, and there was there was more in there, and these are teaser ones, so they're spares. So I got one. Sweet, nice. I'm I'm really looking forward to Captain America too. I am too. I'm looking more yeah. forward to Cap two than Thor, but still, Thor mm-hmm. looks really fun to me. I mean, I, unless I, I'm well, judging from the trailers that I saw before in the past, I'm not interested in it at all. Which I'm hope I'm hoping I I'm like once I see it, I don't think I plan on, plan on seeing it in theaters. I think I wait for that to come out on DVD. But I hope I like it more, way more than I like than uh, the first Thor. I don't like the first Thor at all, but I love the first Captain America. Loved it, and it was the opposite that happened. Because when I, before the release, I thought I liked Thor more than Captain America, so I went into expecting uh, liking Thor better. So, I just think they handled a lot of things in that movie wrong. Yeah. But that's my opinion. Never was really a huge Thor fan anyway, but I still thought it was like pretty exciting. Um. But yeah, Captain America too. Like, I'm really excited for that, especially how they're gonna how they're gonna deal with Bucky becoming the Winter Soldier. Everyone thinks he's gonna be Cap, and I I guess Chris Evans is confirmed to be Cap in Avengers too. So apparently he's not. Mm-hmm. And I've I have a friend. She is like so head over heels for Bucky and Winter Soldier, and like every day I get text message updates on that movie <laughs> as <laughs> produ- as his production moves forward. So I pretty much don't even have to look at news websites for that. And I told her, I was like, we got posters. And she's about to start working at a movie theater as well. And she's like, oh my god, mm-hmm. I, have, I have to get one. I have to get one. I have to get one. So, um, yeah. speaking of movies, hey Jesse. Let's, hey. Let's talk some movies. Andrew. Yeah. Let's that talk some good. movies. Andrew, 
I, I, I pitched this at Jesse yesterday, and yeah. um, it was just an idea I had on Facebook, and also, uh, you know, I'll, I'll bring this up later, I'll bring this up later when we get into questions about Facebook, um, hmm. but I had this idea on Facebook, uh, I just th- I was just thinking, I was like, well, what movies did I like this year? So, Andrew, me and Jesse decided we're going to have a segment on tonight's show. What were your top favorite movies of the 2013 summer? For me, you don't have to think. Of, you don't have to. You have to brainstorm right now. If you'd like to go first, no, go ahead. you go first. Yeah, no I, Let me think about it. You know. Okay, Jesse, do you know yours? Or do you need Actually, yours? no, I don't. I need to brainstorm too. Okay, because I, so I, I didn't. I didn't get a chance like to yet. Go? Yeah. I have mine. Okay. Yeah, I think what we should do. Um, I mean, you name your top five and we'll name off our top five real quick because I'm sure that some of ours are going to be overlapping yes. points and then after we discuss, discuss like each of our top fives then we'll talk about each movie okay so let me go to my Facebook actually um okay my number five is The World's End my number four is Iron Man 3 Number three is Star Trek Into Darkness. Also, I parsed that wrong the other day, and I was just, I always thought how kludgy of a name Into Darkness was. I was like, wait. There's no colon. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's Trek Into Darkness. Trek means journey, yeah. journey into darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness. I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's Star Trek Into Darkness. That's, that rolls off the tongue really fast and awkward. Um, <laughs> number two which is surprising even to me, is Kick-Ass 2. That movie's getting terrible reviews. Oh, it is. Like, I, I had so many people, on, even on my friends list, like, what? why is that in there? I We'll talk about it. But I enjoyed that movie so bu- so much. So bust. So bust. Uh, okay, guess my number one. Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim, yes. Actually, as it said on Facebook, Pacific motherfucking Rim. There you go. Those that's my top five. Maybe maybe a little bit, you know, cagey and misty with a couple of them as as into where they place. But for the most part, that's correct. Now that's to say my favorite, not the best. These are the ones I enjoyed the most. They're most definitely not the best movies of the summer. And um, I'm sure I might get mess people saying like, "Where's Man of Steel?" Well, Man of Steel is <laughs> probably in like I don't know, Wolverine and Man of Steel and a couple others are are back of the line. I never, I didn't see Kick Ass two yet. I, I enjoyed Man of Steel. That. I didn't think it was good. I enjoyed it. I think it was that good though. And Wolverine, I don't know. That's a a great after credit scene though. <laughs> That's all I say about the Wolverine when people ask out what I thought of it. I'm like, yeah, well, that after credit Ma- scene made for a good trailer. Yeah, seriously, that was a great two hour build up. <laughs> never realized how long the Wolverine was either. How long is it? It's like two hours, two hours and six minutes or something like that. Mm. All right, ahead. Andrew, you got yours? Not yet. I'm still thinking about it. No. All right. <clears throat> I got really. Uh, I I think I've only seen uh, four. M- okay, I'll put an Emmy on there. Up, uh, my top five. Um, let me think of these this order Go real quick. Go from five to one, like one five. being your favorite. Four. I know what I know what two of them are gonna be. Three. Two. One. Okay. My number five favorite movie of the summer was uh, Monsters University. I thought you'd pick that. I didn't know it. Yeah, that, that was a good one too. Mhm. My number four was Iron Man three. Hmm. My number three was Man of Steel. My number two was Pacific Rim. What? It was close, but my number one was Star Trek Into Darkness. Trek Into Darkness. Star Trek Into Darkness. Why did you say it like that? Because there's no <laughs> colon. That's how it's supposed to be parsed, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Andrew, you, you, by you, okay. That. Can we sort of uh, make this more specific because? 2013 is not over with, and we got some really big movies coming towards the end of the year. 
Well, oh, I this is the summer. This is the summer. The summer. Okay. okay. Don't we're, Andrew, we're sticking, yeah. we're sticking with that. Listen. So yeah. Summer. Uh, for me, Iron Man three would be number five. Uh, Man of Steel would be number four. Monsters U would be number three. And okay. um, mm-hmm. um let's see, I'm trying to Two think one. here. Do you need a memory jog of what movies came out? Despicable Me Too was pretty good. I think that's number two. Uh, I did not really? like that at all. Really. But I remember I did see that one. I did not like it. You know, I have I haven't seen Pacific Rim yet, so I can't really count it. What oh, I know. suck. But You're fired. uh You're number fired. one would have to be Star Trek. Alright, now let's talk about each of the movies. Um movies that were on all of our lists were pretty much Iron Man 3, Star Trek, and well, those two were on all, on all of ours, I believe so, right? Yes. Uh, so, um, actually, I've been really meaning to talk about Iron Man 3 because uh, th- after thinking about it, I mean, after, when coming out of the theaters, I liked it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was pretty enjoyable. The first one is always going to be a masterpiece to me. Yeah, I agree. There's, yeah. There's hard. There's hardly anything wrong with that. But parts of Iron Man three, I really, really want to love. But there's other parts of Iron Man three that I really, really want to fucking hate. Um, so when I go to midnight releases of movies, I pretty mm-hmm. much I get into it. Like I start rocking yeah. back and forth, edge of my seat. Like I thought the Dark Knight Rises had problems, but that movie had feels. I was a blithering mess. At the end of I Dark Knight Rises. I cried like cried. a little bitch. I, I still cried. cry at the end of that movie. I cried in Toy Story 3. Um, and, like, in the Avengers, I was God. Just, Toy but, Story 3 is like Schindler's Toys with Box. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, <laughs> at the end of Iron Man 3, literally, like, literally this happened. When the whole reveal at the end... Okay, Iron Man 3 spoilers. If you haven't seen it yet, you know, keep going. The show, a few minutes. But we're talking about movies here. If you haven't seen any of these movies, there might be a little bit of spoilers. So, but it, when it's revealed in the end, what he decided to do with the arc, the arc reactor, my my left hand was in the air, at the screen, <laughs> like holding something at it with my mouth <laughs> agape, just like what? That pissed me off. What? Yeah. What are you doing? Like it, why? It, why didn't he do this when it was killing him? In Iron Man Two, they're doing it for yeah. plot device now, and now that completely gets. Because I've been watching Iron Man 1. It's been on FX a couple times lately. And I watched it after I saw Iron oh, Man 3. And I was, so good. After I saw Iron Man 3, I, my initial thought was him getting rid of the arc reactor and giving up his suits for Pepper um, bitch. completely negates the entire point of the first movie in which where he, he made weapons that were being used against the people that he thought they were defending. And he wanted to do something right to the people he was hurting. He wanted to protect people now. Not hurt them anymore. And now he doesn't want to protect them anymore. Why? Like, that that was my problem with Iron Man 3. It was, you're neglecting the entire character turnaround of Tony Stark from the first movie. Exactly. Thank you. That, that was, that's my number one problem with it. It's not, it, it's not the Mandarin. It's not Trevor. It's not even the I like the, I, uh, my biggest problems with the movie is that not necessarily that you know Tony Stark is not Iron Man a whole lot in the movie? I can I handle that. that. Yeah, I didn't mind. I can either. because I it's didn't. it's a good it's a good like just kind of you know a little biopic on Tony Stark. What really bothered me about that part is though is that when he when most of the times when Iron Man sc- was on screen he was really being remote control man. I yeah. hated that. I hated that. I thought the function they, was cool, but yeah, like. But still, no, 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 no. But like, he made ba- basically Tony Stark was just useless at that point. Like, he was like, "Oh no, I don't want to get in the suit, so yeah, I'm just gonna re- control him with these don't implants in my arms and this like headset. It. So I'm gonna be a regular man controlling Iron Man's suit." And they, they never explained that. That's another thing that got me. He was just controlling the suit. He's like, "All right, I'm gonna put these things in my arm, and now I can do this." Like, what? Huh? <laughs> what? 
Was that Tony? What? what? How are you doing that? I, like, there's a few cheeky things in the movie I do like. I liked, oh, so apparently, um, this was pointed out to me on Tumblr. So, you remember in the scene where Rebecca Hall, I don't know her, I forgot her name in the movie, where she walked into the room. Scientist and, chick. Yeah, uh, the, the, what's her, what they call her? A, um, a botanist. Uh-huh. Uh, where she walks in the room, and Tony and Pepper are going back and forth, and it's like, it's, the bunny's not weird. If you look on the chimney, <laughs> if you look on the chimney, Jarvis has a stocking, and that's the cutest thing I've ever Does seen. Does he really? Yes. That's Jarvis awesome. I, I just... That's, like, really, that's really cool. But, one thing oh, I've yeah. always loved about the Iron Man movie series is Jarvis being an AI and not a real person, because there's so much neat little metafiction in that, and headcanon mm -hmm. you can create, because I've seen so many things about, you know... And I like the thought of that's it. That's a major it, change. That's yeah, a big major change. I think it's a change. good one, though. I think it's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Because the and, main and one now I saw... In, hmm? And now in all uh, subsequent media based off Iron Man, he's always an AI now. So like in the new Avengers... Or in the Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes, Jarvis was an AI. Uh, oh, the... Yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about now. Um, but, yeah... The good series. One of them, yeah. One of the things I read was Tony Stark actually created Jarvis because he was lonely. Oh, don't that, leave me, buddy. That, that was, was a, that so was a, sad. Uh huh. He's like Jarvis, come on. And he's just like I, I, I don't know what what's going on. And he's oh, that's so sad. I th I think I'm going to take a nap now. I had some serious feels until he's just laying there useless. That's so sad. And then like uh, okay. So with the Avengers two having its own Ultron, so to speak. Apparently, the premise of it is. What what we found out apparently what they said was apparently what Ultron is in the Avengers two is the government creates Ultron to kind of shoo away the Avengers, and then Ultron turns AI against the government, and the government's like, "Hey Avengers, help us!" Ha <laughs> um, ha. That's what, well, our bad. So what? I, uh, yeah, like they say the government created Ultron. They need the contract. Hank Pym, and apparently Nathan Fillion came out and said he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't playing Hank Pym. It doesn't mean he's not playing Henry Pym. So true. Uh, I I have hopes. I think it's gonna happen. I fucking love Nathan Fillion. I want him in my movies. I think he's fucking great. And he is great. He's in shows like Firefly and Castle, where he plays. He was like the fucking Reynolds bomb in Slither. Castle. Slither, that movie with um, uh, Michael Rooker, is another movie you should check out. And I was afraid at that at the end of that movie, and uh, it was fine. Uh, that movie was also creepy and kind of sweet. That scene mm -hmm. with the barn and the woman where she explodes is awesome. All right, let's get back on Iron Man three. I fucking love Nathan Fillion. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? What I really fucking love? Fortress Maximus. Exactly. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Andrew. Andrew doesn't know what we're talking about. He he is absolutely awesome. There's nothing better. <laughs> I wish I had I mean, more Max. He he is absolutely awesome. I mean, anyone that would disagree otherwise, Nazi, <laughs> Nazi. communist. I thought this was America. I thought I'm sorry. I thought we were living in America. I thought this was Fortress America. <laughs> Fortress America. <laughs> the the United States of Maximus. United Maximus. Okay. Um. Um. One thing. One other thing that I really don't like. I mean, it it kind of did. It deals with the Mandarin. I mean, I don't care that he like he's like uh, Trevor. He's uh, Trevor, but I mean, they t kind of turned him into comic relief. But I think it would have been a little bit better. I kind of like that um, he wasn't necessarily the main villain. That Adrian uh, was actually the true Mandarin. Yeah, Ultra Killer. I they, liked they him could, as a villain. I really yeah, liked him as a villain. But like they, I think they could have done a little bit more of a serious route. Um, you know, of him being a, a series, figurehead. yeah, because of, like in Dark Knight Rises, Bane is not really the true villain, but he's also <gasps> not like, oh, I was, I was not, I'm, I'm just an actor. Oh, his mask. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, but still, the manor is still goofy as hell. So this just popped it. into my head, but I was talking to someone about Superman. I was talking to a GameStop employee about Superman Returns, and until the, uh, I forget who put it in perspective for it was some YouTube video, but. My favorite part of Superman Returns is the part where he becomes a deadbeat dad. <laughs> <laughs> and stops all his leg. <laughs> and doesn't pay child support. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, um, do you want to go on to Star Trek? No, no, there's one other okay. thing to, about Iron Man 3 that really bothers me. It exists. One word. What's the word? Pepper. Yeah! There's pepper. way, way too much yeah. pepper in that movie. Yeah, it needed a little... Yeah, it, they it added too much really, pepper. really bothered me yeah, how, like, retard strong she is at the end. And, like, defeats Adrian in, like, no time. I thought that was cool, like, how she did it, and she, like, didn't even know how she did it. That was my problem. It was the fact of, like... Tony is, like, legit going through some mental shit. Now, whether or not she knows about it, he is messed up right now. He needs mm-hmm. kind of... He he just needs to relax for a minute. Build a few suits. I mean, just you let him do his thing, and she gives him shit for it. Um, yeah, bitch. Yeah, she... Yeah. I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that they portrayed... Just portrayed her just pretty much be like, Ugh, New York happened. Get over it. Oh, my God. Because that's exactly how I read it. It is. Come, oh my God. come join me in the shower. That's stop, all. Stop crying. Let's go shower together. Just put away. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I did. I mean, I don't look at my manly I, hands. Geez, That's something. Have... Uh, like it's weird. I don't think Gwyneth Paltrow has manly hands, but God, Pepper Potts does. And that was my thing <laughs> with um with Lori. That was my thing with Lori in The Walking Dead. Sarah Wayne Callies, I've seen her in other cameo appearances on shows, and she doesn't look like that. But for some reason, The Walking Dead, she has manly hands. And likes doggy style. Oh, well. Uh, mm-hmm. In the second episode. Second episode in. Damn. They didn't do They didn't do that position in the second episode. Uh, well, she was on her belly. Was anyway. she? Yeah. With Four. Shane. What? Well, I don't remember the woods. that. I remember, the, I remember the scene in the woods. Yeah, like, like, toward. <laughs> is he crying? Yeah, he's sleeping. Doesn't sound like sleeping. He is. Sort of I think he's dreaming. Oh. Because he's stopped right now. Okay. Yeah, like, like, yeah, in the, the, right before the credits, uh, the opening title credits start, she, like, rolls on her belly and, he gets on top. That messed up. Yeah. Anyway, you know, um, when, you, when you switch positions, that's when you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and she yeah, and wasn't. she takes she takes off her necklace and puts it off to the side and then does that. That 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 one particular scene messed with me a lot. It's like, damn. I've forgotten that scene. I like right now. Like I, I had forgotten the scene. Like okay, so one meme I always liked from The Walking Dead was the one that it has Lori. Uh, where it says, tells Rick to kill Shane, gets mad and Rick kills Shane. By the way, yes. the spoilers. I'm so sorry, I should have I should have warned that. Um, but, and I'd actually, I, I didn't know what that meme was referencing. I was like, that's hilarious, but I don't remember her saying that. But it's the scene where, uh, they, where Herschel and Glenn and Rick come back from the bar with, um, what's his name? Randall. And Lori's like, you kill to protect what's yours? You, you defeated the danger, and Rick's like, "Yeah," and she's all like, "Yeah," <laughs> and she she literally says like, "Shane is dangerous. Shane, you know, means trouble or something along those lines." And he just kind of shows his face in the credits roll. I'm like, "That bitch! She totally, pretty much did tell him <laughs> to kill Shane." And not she's like, "Don't touch me." <laughs> Very true. It's like, yeah, well, you kind of you had that coming. So did he. Shane was a mm-hmm. dick. Shane, Shane but, was. But I a mean. I kind of like Shane. I did too. I liked Shane's character placement. I don't like his character, but I like the. I like. I could. I, I could understand everything that he was doing. Like I could understand mm-hmm. why he did what he did. And you even kind of felt killing, bad for Shane. Even when killing point. that fat man just to save to make sure he could save Carl. Poor Otis. And I thought it was so fucked. Like I. I don't know. Some some clear little parts throughout season two. That's why I love season two so much. A lot of people really don't like season two. Like. When season three was premiering, I was like, "Oh, this is great," but I still like season two. I think more than season three. I do like season two too. Two two. It it is like it's kind of slow, but it has so much story, and it all rolls out like there are no air bubbles in that se- season. And like mm-hmm. the scenes with with where they're talking about Otis and the sacrifice he made, and Shane, they just have shots of Shane, Shane just standing there, just listening <laughs> to what they're saying. And then, like, they had the scene where, um, 
where Dale is killing everyone in the farm, and he's talking to Daryl, and he's like, I, I think, I think Shane killed Otis, and Daryl's like, yeah, I know he did, you don't, you don't come back with a dead man's gun, where you didn't, no, of course he did, and Rick knows it too, because Rick ain't stupid, I love that scene so much, because he's like, yeah, I know, and so does Rick, we all know he did it, but Rick, like, that kind of shows, like, Rick didn't want to believe it, and there's so much good character in season two. I think it's overlooked so bad. Star Trek in the Darkness. Not as good as The Walking Dead. Or Breaking <laughs> Bad. Breaking Bad has four episodes left. I'm shitting myself. I okay, still so. love... Is it the three, four episodes in the entire series or just the season? The entire series. It's ending. Oh, really? Catch up on it. I, I need to start it. Do it. I gave my friend my Netflix account and he made a status about Walter White and I was like, yes. Hmm. Alright, Star Trek. Uh, like it, nay, yay, free. nay. I liked it a lot. Me too. This conversation, you guys are more Trekkies than mine. I like, love, love Star Trek in the Me darkness. Me too. I met some people well, who were really adamant about not liking it. Yeah. I, I mean, I loved, I loved the fact that Khan was not necessarily the villain in the movie. That or scene John, where he John like, Harrison, I that, should say. That scene Spoiler where he, alert. when he blows up that dude's head, really bothers me. I love that part. That 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 was so dark. I was just like, oh, I I can't. I mean, I mean, General or Admiral Marcus was basically like his slave owner. He was breaking free. Breaking like back. he had he had to serve by Admiral Marcus's rule, and Marcus was an asshole. He wanted war. He used Khan just to be like, all right, I'm going to use your intellect to build this war machine and just like just start shit. I I I, re- I I I mean all that uh, uh, Khan really wanted was his crew and to be like left alone basically. Well, at he played point. Kirk too. Mm-hmm. He, he played yeah. played everyone. I mean that's what he and does. That's what Kirk he does best. Uh huh. He just didn't think. He just kind of underestimated him. But my problems with that whole movie were the fact that it was. Uh, it was trying to be a remake, but not really. But it was having like playing off like exact lines, just not nearly as good. Like I, I rolled my eyes literally. Like within the first five minutes, when Spock was inside the fucking volcano, and he was saying like trying to convince them not to come rescue him. He said, "Uh, the, you know the the needs of the many outweigh the needs of flu few." I thought that was played off better. What, no, what, it was not. It was not played well, off better because better, there's better no, there's no. Okay, I, I uh, yeah, fine. I can agree there. Because because he he wasn't. He there's wasn't, no he emotion wasn't. in that scene. It was taken way out of context. It's Spock. He, he, he was thinking. No he, he wasn't. He was. Yeah, he it, wasn't. He wasn't talking about. He wasn't talking about like the crew. He was talking about the indigenous species where they can't afford to see the, the the ship. And yeah. I I got that. I didn't really care. I guess it's because I don't have much emotional affiliation with Star Trek. I just think it's a cool thing. That might be why. Yeah, I, I, I can understand why, you, but like, I'm movie. very. I mean, I've seen Star Trek to Wrath of Khan probably like 20 to 30 times. Like, I love that one out of the classic, you know, first six cla- uh, original series uh, cast. Like, and, that, and just like, that was just played off so well. Like, it was just a, in, the, in, the, in Star Trek 2, that was, that was first mentioned in. Uh, just a, one, a single one-on-one conversation between Kirk and Spock when they're discussing that Kirk is having a hard time dealing with his age and that fact that, you know, he's not necessarily captain of the Enterprise and he's just, you know, just having a hard time, you know, uh, dealing with the fact that he's getting old and the fact that, you know, Spock you know, views Kirk as his, you know, his friend, you know, you're my friend, I have been, and will always be yours. And, you know, saying that, you know, basically saying that he would die for Kirk and the rest of the crew. Wow, well, that it was a very, it was a very, very emotional scene then. But then that, just the, having that same line mm-hmm. sp- just rushed out, and like, in this big action sequence. Yeah, I see where I mean, you're coming it, from. I mean, it was even done better in Dark of the Moon when played by Leonard Nimoy. Yeah. Like I didn't roll my eyes in. <laughs> I actually didn't get that. That was that was a few years ago. I didn't mm-hmm. get that line. Like I was like, oh, what is that from? 
And like mm-hmm. I saw that movie this the next day with my mother, and my mother like she loves Star Trek. She used to watch all the time, and she, uh, her ex husband um, is a huge Trekkie, and mm-hmm. her ex husband is my sister's dad. So like they're like they still talk and stuff, and they you know you know friends with business or uh, they used to run a business together. Um, so like and he would always talk about Star Trek. When I was there, I never got that, and when we left the theater. I like my mom was like, yeah, that was, that was Leonard Nimoy. I knew it was Leonard Nimoy. She's like, yeah, that line, that's from Star Trek. I was like, oh, cool. It's weird that my mother is being a nerd right now. But yeah, I, I love um, the tension between, uh, uh, especially towards the beginning of Kirk and Pike. Mm-hmm. I mean, Pike is still trying to be like you know that uh, adoptive father mm-hmm. to him. You know, he's being super strict and super strict. But then when it comes to one of like. I know you're do trying to ju- you're doing everything out of the bottom of your heart, and that's why I mean I push I still have to follow regulations, but that's why I like I begged Marcus basically just to give make you my second in command now. I, f- so I felt bad being, for Pike. Oh God, that death that that was. And I felt bad for Spock too. Like that was that was, mm-hmm. what what Spock said where he did the mind meld and he could feel right, and he was just like, oh, I, I can't I can't do that. See, so he had a lot of emotion it there. Scared him, you know. Yeah. And I felt like, I don't know, there were other scenes that I think kind of lacked some emotion. And then it was, it was the scene after that one big climactic scene. Okay, really quick though. Okay, you talk about lack of emotion. My biggest problem with that movie Hmm. is Spock screaming Khan. Okay, okay. So that was actually just what I was about to talk about. I didn't, I didn't think about it like this. Okay, Okay. but I I definitely see the point of. So that line of Khan, ever since the original Star Trek, it's it's actually pretty much been turned into a joke. Yes, it had. I, I brought so, this up, point up exactly the like when we first when we both yeah. when we both first saw the movie, because Star Trek Two the scene happens where uh, Kirk and his crew were basically like left to be abandoned on the moon on the si- on the moon the Genesis planet the Genesis moon where they're right. doing the mm-hmm. the test and. You know, Khan is basically like egging him, like you know, just kind of like not egging, but kind of egging him, just like you know, just a uh, kind of a uh, taunted him, saying like you know, I bested you, I smarted you over, over uh, their walkie talkies or whatever, whatever uh, telecommunicators, whatever they're, and he, you can see just Kirk just getting slowly more aggravated as as he weighs like, and uh, what was, what did Khan say like, uh. I can't re- I can't remember exactly what Kyle was saying, like basically saying that, you know, you're gonna die in this planet alone and Kirk just comes to a boiling point and you know, you can just see the just rage in him and just screaming like, you know, Khan and then voice echoes throughout the planet with all his rage and then Khan just kinda of sits back in his chair and just gratifies in the fact that he pushed Kirk to his emotional limits there. This And they say Kirk can't his- act. Or Shatner can't act. He's he's can't act. He overacts, yeah. and this is the point where overacting is you know it paid off for, for him there. because yeah. it just really worked. Yeah, but I mean, ever since then, people have just taken that one scene out of context. And yes, when you take that one part out of a scene, it, it is it's funny, and that's all that people think about now. So when you try to pay you know homage to that or just kind of I don't know make fun of that one scene, I'm not sure if they're trying to make fun of that scene. But when you do that. In, in uh, into darkness. Where, where did Wyatt go? I think he got dropped off. Anyway, I'm going to yeah. keep on going. Wyatt. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, you you dropped off for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, when you when you pay homage to that scene, where it just you know, with, you know, obviously Spurk's upset, Kirk dies, and he just rings Khan. You, you knew the entire movie they're going to do that, and people, the general audience that goes to see will go to see this movie. You know, the average like you know grandma or sister or whatever girlfriend, they're going to know that meme and they're going to see that and they're going to laugh. If my grandmother knew memes, I think I'd probably shoot myself. <laughs> but still, they just did not handle that. They didn't respect the emotional weight of that of some of the scenes in that movie and that's the parts that really irked me yeah. but the strengths of the movie are really outweigh good. the needs of the few <laughs> yeah the strengths of that movie are 
really fucking good. Like, yeah. the Admiral, Mar Admiral Marcus being a villain, but not really, because he's actually perfectly justified with what he's doing. He's just being, like, an extremist. He's being a dick. Yeah, he's kind of being a dick, because, like, he basically said, like, you know, he set up Kirk from the beginning, like, you're, you're going to go here, start war to Klingons, and I'm going to kill you. Which basically, at one point. I really also do like Benedict. And he's Robocop. Hold on, we gotta play the clip. Yes. I do. I do love that line. We gotta play the he's clip. Like I, I've been trained to to be better, more skilled, faster. And he's just like, I'm better at what? Everything. I love that line. I just I like Benedict Cumberbatch, and I think as like his voice is so cool. I cannot wait to see The Hobbit too with him voicing Smog. He voices Smog. Mm hmm. Oh. Fuck. Fuck. I know, right? He's in a movie, and I think the movie premise itself is interesting, but if he wasn't in it, I wouldn't give two shits about it, and now I kind of want to see it. You know what really kind of confuses me, though? Huh? Um, is this back in Star Trek? You're not going to get this. But, okay. Andrew, you're, you're going to get this. We'll see. Get in Star Trek, in Star Trek uh, the episode Space Seed, it was basically mentioned to the point that uh, Khan was Indian by descent. Yeah, I remember that. No, so, British. did they, like... Yeah, so did they, like, uh, give him plastic surgery to look absolutely Caucasian? Different con. I thought this was different continuity. Uh, but, but I mean, they had the same origin. It's only... It only it's a split continuity in the 23rd century. Everyone still has the same origin. Same origin? I don't... Yeah, you're right. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because, alright, con came from the from the late 20th century until it was put into cryosleep and floated around space with his crew for mm -hmm. 300, 300 right. years. That yeah. part stayed the same. In the Star Trek episode Space Seed, Khan something Singh was, you know, was uh, the uh, captain of his crew, the leader of his crew, but he was obviously, for whatever reason, they made him Indian. And he was very, like, he had, uh, if you looked at, him, it, it looked at him in the episode Space Seed, I mean, he's very obviously just like you know. Um, it was weird because he's being played by a Mexican, but he's well, like very. Well, I mean, maybe they're racist. Um, yeah, but but even on websites they're saying like you know maybe uh, a deleted scene or something may have explained that maybe he went they were he was forced to undergo plastic surgery to change his appearance. But why? Since he, I don't. But, I don't get that. Or, I, I have no idea. I don't know. It's, it's see, like Jean Luc Picard being an Englishman. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. well, I, I'm not saying I yeah. don't like it. It's just kind of an odd quirk if you're familiar with the original version right. of Khan. And but now this is a different Khan, isn't it? Wait, well, it's different continuity. Okay, but, uh, okay. Isn't it? Yes, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an alternate reality, but it's not like saying like you know they're gonna make Kirk black now, but it's okay. No, they can't just do that. Why not? If it's new, why not? Because it's. I'm, still I'm actually like, asking. I'm not trying to be. A okay. Dick, All right. Old Spock okay, from the yeah. first movie. He yeah. came. He came from the original continuity into the past. Did he? okay. Okay. Was he yes, actually from the original continuity? Yes. It's a sequel and a prequel at the same time. This is fucking confusing. J.J. Abrams, stop. <laughs> I just consider it a completely different I, universe. Yeah, that's, it, it's that's how it's different reality. It's a separate entity. It's an alternate yeah. reality. It's an alternate reality. Kirk, or not Kirk, Spock, came from the late 24th century uh, oh Star God. Trek Next Generation time. That makes it, sense for it to be an alternate reality because, yes, at, because, because of the, the scene of Spock and Kirk in the tube was reversed. But still. <laughs> Yes, because you know uh, things. Some uh, some parts in fate are about going to happen, such as uh, Kirk me meeting Kara Marcus, who in the Prime Universe they did meet and they had a child together. They so th some things are going to happen, but some. But in the same time, not everyone's safe because the Romulan ship Narada going back in time really fucked up their universe. The, so the, it's a so it's the, a sequel and a prequel at the same time. The budget for the alternate reality is much better. Yes, it is. It's a sequel, it's a prequel, better. reboot. <laughs> yes. yes, I know. It's and they actually explained to that all in the in the first movie. And like one scene is like, you know, uh, Ahura says, uh, you know, it's an alternate reality where our futures are not certain. 
Man, you should just never bring this up again because my head. <laughs> or is your brain fried right now? Yeah, I'm done. All right, so let's let's go on to some other movies. But uh, but but when? Th- well, okay. I really love the battle between the Enterprise and the Vengeance. Andrew, you you mean the one where the Enterprise gets? Yep. Fucked? Yes, it got shot like seventy-two <laughs> times. It they falls. got their ass kicked. Yeah. I'd, well, okay, okay, okay. How, they're by the moon. How the hell does it fall to Earth with gravity? Well, they're always moving. Don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Just one of those things. Well, huh? if there there are even okay. bigger plot holes, where are the other Star Trek ships? Um, most of them. <laughs> Most of them were probably destroyed by the Narada in Star Trek One. They haven't rebuilt them yet. They rebuilt the the one, but not the other. It took it took them a year to rechristen the Enterprise. Imagine how much it would take, how long it would take to rebuild an entire fleet. Shh. Let's go on to another movie. Fine. Man of Steel. Eh. I like it. Every time someone asks me what I thought of Man of Steel. Uh, I openly tell them I think that is an extremely okay movie. Listen, I'm I'm what happy. The, what, it's better than what's your Superman favorite? Returns. What's your favorite? Mis- oh God, that's not saying much though because Man of Steel, uh, Superman Returns is such bottom. I know, barrel. but I'm just saying. I thought Superman Returns had a nice quirk to it. I thought Man of Steel was overly complex. Okay, what's I your think- favorite? What's your favorite scene in Man of Steel? Um. Where he kills. I don't know Zod. what my favorite one would be. I don't think that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Oh, my oh, favorite I do, scene. I do like that scene because just how he screams. He didn't want to do that. Like, I don't hate Man of Steel. I really don't. It's just not one of my favorites. I thought the movie w- could have been handled better. A lot better. Much better. My my favorite scene is where Zod and his crew went to the Kent farm and approached Martha Kent and picked her, picked her up by the neck. And then out and of nowhere, threw her truck into his Clark's room. But but then out of nowhere, uh, Clark sees that and just like just tackles General Zod and like goes th- like what seems like a hundred miles, just crashing through buildings, just basically over him touching his mom. Yeah, like that was yeah. that was a very emotional scene. Like he you was know, pissed. That push him dead. Like you you and that I fucking. I do. One scene that, I do like. It's not my favorite, but it's the one where like. Clark is like a preteen. Kids see him at the mill. They're trying to like, come on, man, fight! Come on, you don't fight! Fight me! Fight me! And and like they see they see Kevin Costner. And Kevin Costner's like, no, I'm gonna fuck you up with his lead pipe. And they're like, all right, man, let's go. <laughs> and then Clark gets up. Like I hop guy helps Clark up, and it shows the the fence, and it's just like crushed where he was just mad. Mm-hmm. Like imagine was, Clark would have hit that kid when he couldn't control his powers. His jaw probably he would have he off. would cease to exist. Yeah, that kid's jaw Pretty would much, be over yeah. there. Like that kid would have died. Yeah. And I thought one scene that always kind of it kind of messes me, like when, like, what, what's his what's his what's Kevin Costner's what's Jonathan Kent. John Kent. Okay. Or yeah. They, Paul Paul Kent. They just call <laughs> Paul. 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 Yeah, when, when That's Paul, why he's usually referred to as in the comics. So like, they just don't, don't normally go by Jonathan. They just call him Paul. Um, the scene where I mean, this isn't really they didn't really stand out to me, but like in the trailer. But when you're watching it in the movie, you're just like, "Fuck!" It's the one where um, he's like, "What was I supposed to do? Just let him die?" And he just kind of sits there and he's just like, "Maybe." <sighs> like he 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 was so and then like I don't know one scene that kind of got me. Like, I was like, oh, man, that sucks. But then, like, a second later, it clicked. I was like, hold on, that was kind of dumb. Was the scene where Jonathan Kent gets swept up in that tornado. Like, they like, didn't no, s- see no, the tornado I'll... coming? <laughs> like, and it wasn't even that. It wasn't even like, oh, I'm going to get swept up in this tornado for a reason. Like, they didn't see that tornado coming. There were no weather alerts. It literally just, just started. I'm just like, oh. And then, like, he, he didn't have to do that. Like, he, no. I don't know. Uh, Superman's thought, fast. He can go faster than anyone could see them. Save yeah. him. I mean, he's like... He could have, like, looked over the other way and, like, guys, look, another tornado. Everyone would have turned. By the time they looked back, he would have been back there with John mm-hmm. Kent, with Paul Kent. Everything would have been fine. The dog would have Jonathan been fine. Jonathan Kent was severely out of character this entire movie. It was played, bri- it was played well, 
Yeah. But I mean, it was not Jonathan Kent in in all the in the comics has always been like the more the most supportive. Go be person. Superman. Yes, do you you do what you have to do. Do what you feel is right because he he trusts Clark's judgment. He knows that he knows what is right, emotion or not, and he knows like you do what you need to do to help these people. They'll uh, be the best you can be, you know. Be basically like you know, just like the ideal dad for what he needs. But this entire movie is like, no, don't be special. Hide in the closet. We don't want anyone to see you, and I will die protecting that. Um, one scene I do really like it. It's kind of emotional. Is like. At the very end, where they go to his grave, and it's there's no audio from the actual scene, but it's Clark when he's a kid running around with the dog, and he has, he has the blanket as a cape, and Martha Kent's just doing laundry, Paul Kent's working on the car, and he just looks up, and she's all like, she's like, oh, you, and he's just kind of staring at him, playing there in the cape, and he's just like, like, he doesn't say anything, and it, it kind of hits him, he's like, you know, that's my son, and I can tell that w- he's going to grow up to do godlike like Foreshadowing. Things. Yeah. Now, another thing is, there was way too... I've, I've said this many, many times. There's way too much destruction in that movie. Like, thousands upon thousands of people died. I didn't mind that at all. Fighting. <laughs> I, I did. That bothered me. I was like, this is not fun to watch. Well, they're super beings. What's going to happen? Like, they Superman is crashing there. through... Superman is crashing through a building at his own will. There probably dozens of people on that floor. Yeah, he probably splattered a lot he, of them. <laughs> he flew around them. I don't know. <laughs> no, he didn't. I, Excuse I, me, pardon me. Another, another, um, another scene I really enjoyed or a graphic I loved was um, Superman and Zod. It was super CGI. None of it was real. But it was where they're flying through the city, super fast, and it ends with like him throwing Clark by his cape. Like that. That looked beautiful. To me, at least, I thought it was fast-paced. Yeah, their their fight was great, but God, so many people died. <laughs> yes, especially stupid. with that uh, fucking uh, like uh, planet converter thing, just like picking up yes. thousands of people and just slamming them into the ground. Good. The number one thing they that bothers me in that movie is that's what they do. At, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> shut the fuck up! Is Get over it. <laughs> where super buff ass. Super buff ass guy. Like I was watching him ride around on his bicycle. I was like, okay, here we go. And I was like, how do they not notice this guy pretty much busting out of his button up? And I'm just like, how do they not know this? And then he, then he gets in the elevator and then puts on the glasses. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? How does nobody like? This Everyone just saw happened. him from a distance. This just happened. That I, I don't know. Okay, so I. Welcome I, to the planet. I like that line. I like that scene. Yeah, that was clever. He's like, glad to be here. I, I do love that scene. That was cheeky. And I was like, yeah. Um, though, but like, I was watching that um, that one show, um, the one with Dean Cain, the, the Adventures of, or the, the yeah, Lo- uh, Lois and Clark, the new Adventures yeah. of Superman. I, that's not a bad show. Um, yeah. It was a cheeky show. And I didn't, there's I a didn't scene where really guy- care too much about it. That was hard to watch. I wish I would have watched more. Real yeah. hard. Really? I didn't, I didn't care. It was more about Clark and Lois. Um, there's, a, there's a part in one episode where this guy's dying on a sidewalk, and Lois and Superman run up to him, and, like, I'm pretty sure, I, if I remember it right, his last words were actually, huh, you look a lot like Clark Kent, and he dies. Really? <laughs> yes. That's funny. Because they knew Clark, apparently. The guy knew Clark, and, like, he saw Superman up close, and was like, you look like Clark Kent, and die. I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I. Someone I finally figures it like, out, okay. and they die. <laughs> I get it. the gl- the glasses are his disguise, and then he didn't even have the glasses on. I was just like, please, just let me leave this theater now. Um. Let's see. Pacific Rim. I've talked so much about this movie. That movie's it's so brilliant. Good. It's so good. Needs to be seen on the big screen. Yes. It comes out on DVD October 15th. October 15th. That's just a tad bit over a month away. Mm-hmm. Sweet. So good. Um, okay. So before before I almost check out here mentally because I'm tired and stuff. Um, I brought this. I, 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 I got to say something real quick. I gotta okay. Say um, okay. 
Andrew, is there a reason you haven't seen Pacific Rim yet? I he just had a lot going on. He doesn't. I had death in the family that took a while to take care of, and work got. When you get a chance, pushed seriously, back. Go, do yourself a favor. Well, I I, I do plan it to watch so it. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I think everything that I've had to say about Pacific Rim has already been said, and I don't really know if I have the strength to say it all again. One thing I've, I need to say about Pacific Rim, which I actually mentioned on the last episode, which uh, did not air, was I'm not sure that it was just another mistake or they're paying homage to the, like, the classic monster giant robot movies, but they're in the middle of the fucking ocean. Yeah, wait, that last episode didn't... No, that never that episode never aired. The one the where one, the one where Andrew fucked up his audio. Oh, I thought you were talking about last show, like last week. So I was like, what? No, no, no. We we this is what we talked about on that Lost oh, okay, show. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not last Lost. Yeah. Okay. Um. They're in the middle of the ocean. Both the Jaeger and the monster, the Kaiju, were underwater swimming, mm-hmm. and then they just pop up and start fighting. What are they standing on in the middle of the ocean to be fighting at knee level? Shh. 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 Don't ask questions. Just accept I'm it not, for what they it might is. Be paying, Magic. They might be paying for <laughs> homage to like the old Godzilla movies because they used to do that shit all the time. Or it just might be the same mistake that they, they didn't catch up on. But that first fight is brilliant. Like, I would have liked the idea of, like, someone jokingly during the premiere, someone, like, nudged Del Toro on the shoulder, like, what are they standing on? And Del Toro slowly turns and looks at the screen, he's like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Son of a bitch. Fuck. Do over. Do over. Guys, cut it. Cut it. And then just, like, burn the only copy of the movie. <laughs> we gotta go again. <laughs> shit. Shit. I know what Del Toro looks and sounds like, so I just like the idea of him just going like, shut! <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, uh, brilliant, brilliant movie. By the way, uh, that guy who played um, the main guy, the discount Channing Tatum. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Hunnott, he was cast as the main male yeah, lead in uh, Yeah. Which, which I don't know how they're going to do. I don't know how they're going to do Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> You know, there's not really a whole lot of raunchy stuff in that shit. There's, like, maybe, like, five pages worth in, like, a 500-page book. Uh, still. And they're going to make it PG-13, so... They're going to make it PG-13? They have to. No, what? They can't do that. That, that book was, like, made for, like, uh, young teens. No, it was not. Have you read it? Or maybe maybe late teens. Well, I, haven't I haven't read it. Read it. I've, seen, I've seen people read it. <laughs> like, I haven't read it. Did you read it? No, I've 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 watched videos of people reading radio lines from it. It's very suggestive. It's most times Su- suggestive. Like it, it's, it's not it's not e- it's it's not X-rated. Not at Fifty all. Shades of Grey. Bull on, yeah. shit. Yeah. I'm serious. Tell your wife to read like, that fucking book. Mm. They like they. Okay, like what? What do they say? Like what? Like the. I don't, I don't want to. It's awkward. Like he, <laughs> I can't say. Just it. Like he fucked fucking shit out of me or something like that. Yeah, like that shit is said. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Prove it to me. Oh my god, I was watching a video where they were jokingly saying lines from that movie or from that book, and one of the lines was along the lines of throbbing cock. And yeah, that movie or that book is dirty. It's a dirty <laughs> book. I don't believe it. I do not really? believe it. Seriously. Really? Whatever. No. <laughs> I'm, on page, I'm scrolling through Radicons and I'm on page 73 for no reason. <laughs> Why are you so far? I don't know. I just I have nothing else to do. <laughs> it's, it's just like, yep, I'll go to the page, next page. I'm biding next my time till the end of the show. Alright, um. Man's deep in the room. Kick ass too. I didn't see. Okay. Me neither. Okay, so I want to see. A lot of people really, really do not like Kick Ass Two. Why? I, I was try- Apparently, what the consensus is is apparently the movie to them did not have the heart of the first one, and I disagree. I highly disagree. Um, is now, Jim Carrey good in it? Jim Carrey's good in it. I I mean, 
And also, really quick, this also might entail some kick-ass 2 spoilers. I won't spoil the actual plot for you guys since you haven't seen it. But Jim Carrey was talking about how violent that movie is. That movie was not violent with his character at all. Like, he he didn't do anything too outrageously crazy. The Other characters did. Violent. Uh, this movie's violent. There's a scene where a certain person massacres a bunch of people. And it's crazy how they do it. It's kind of crazy. And, like... I, I remember... I remember hmm. when the big controversy about Kick-Ass 2 was... Before it came out was that they had an underage girl in that movie saying cunt. That was a controversy? Yeah. It's like... I mean, the fact... Just the fact that she was, a, like, a... You know, a, basically an early tween or... A She's tween. 15 or 16 in real life. Chloe yeah, Grace so she, who was great. So she was, like, probably, like, 12... When they first when they made that movie, wait, Kick Ass Two or Kick Ass One? Kick Ass yeah, because I say because I think I saw her in an interview. She said she read the script when she was ten, and she filmed it when she was eleven. Sheesh. I think. Yeah, wow. I could I could kind of see the. I could kind of like, see in, in the in Kick Ass Two. Mm. Okay, so you know how a lot of superhero movies kind of reference the past movie, but they never outright say it. They kind of make it their own standalone movie. This yeah. movie is like so Iron Man Three. <clears throat> Hey, the Avengers. Iron Man um, 3. This movie is so directly like... Guys, th watch the first movie. Because it literally opens up with them referencing the scene in the first movie where Big Daddy shoots her with the gun in the, like that parking lot area. And then, like... Uh, Chris D'Amico is just like, You blew up my dad with a bazooka! You threw away my Red Mist costume! You, I was Red Mist! I was this! Ah, oh, kick ass! He's the first hero! Ah, oh, Big Daddy this, Big Daddy that, my daddy was the greatest. Like, there's, and it's like, yeah, well, your dad died, and, like, it's so crazy, just like, yes, this is a sequel to a thing. I did really like the ending to the first one. I when, love the ending to this one. The ending because, to kick ass uh, 2 was beautiful. I like that they, that they, uh, made reference to the 89 Batman. Yeah. When uh when he's like wait to get the load of me when he became motherfucker at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait till you get a That's load. That's like, A lot of people didn't believe me. I I went to go see it with my girlfriend and I was like, D do you know what his like evil bad guy name is? She's like, no. I was like, his name's the motherfucker. She's like, no. I was like, watch that movie. <laughs> and like, okay, so can I can I spoil how he gets his outfit? Sure. It, it'll okay. be a while before I see that movie. Anyways, anyway, okay. so I might forget. So. His, okay, so somehow his mom dies. All right, and him and uh, oh his, no, I'm not going to see it now. Oh yeah, she was such a main character in the first movie. Um, and his his butler Javier, who is John Leguizamo. Uh, they're cleaning out his mom's stuff, and it like John Leguizamo is like, oh she had she has great guns, and uh, Christine because I'm like, don't talk about her teeth. <laughs> and he's like, no, I mean these. And he's talking about actual guns. He's like, take the guns. And he's carrying another box, and the box gets knocked over. It's a bunch of leather and chains and, like, bondage suits. Wow. And Chris D'Amico just kind of, like, stares at it, and they look at each other. He's like, no, 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 I, I got this. And Javier's like, are, are, are you sure? He's like, yeah. He's, he's scooping it all up. And then, like, there's a, a string of anal beads. And he kind of, like, <laughs> oh looks God. at him, and he looks back at his butler. He's like, whoop. Gotta go, bye. You can go home now. And it was really awkward. And then the next day, Javier walks in on him. He's literally wearing the exact bondage suit with holding <laughs> the guns. Like, it's that, before that he did anything. That became his costume? It, it's before he did anything to it. Like, out uh -oh. of the red and stuff. But yeah, he was literally just wearing that. Uh, the movie's fucked up, though. Like, I, I like the ending. Like, it was... I don't know. Nick, Nick Cage's death in that first movie still haunts me. That was a very powerful death scene. It was grim. It's fucked up. Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, basically, he's being burned to death, and he's just screaming about while still kind of coaching his daughter the entire time. Mm -hmm. And then, like when he when he put when she put him out, he's like all fucked up, like his all faces are all mm -hmm. like scarred from the, you know, from the heat of the flames, and he's like could barely talk because like it hurts so much. And then he just dies right there after you know saying how proud he is. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yep, yep. But it's like, then she had some smarts to say afterwards to uh, 
to kick ass. Like, what do you say? Like, I don't know. It's been a while since I seen it. Like, basically saying like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. What next? Monsters, you? I uh, oh I I I hold on. I did oh. watch parts of the first one recently, mm. and Clark Duke is so fucking funny in that first movie. I don't know Who? why. I just uh, his pudgy friend with the glasses. I don't remember. You don't remember him? No. <laughs> There's another funny part in Kick Ass Two where he, where he becomes Battle Guy. <laughs> I don't want to spoil that one, but. <laughs> All right. Uh. <clears throat> I'm a battle guy. I'm a battle guy. So, in Monsters U, did you guys ever catch Randall's name? <laughs> or in the yeah. First one? Randall the first Bog. One? Randall Boggs. Randall Boggs. Is, is he your uncle? Yeah, we're related. So that would explain a yep, lot of things. Sure does. Yep. I'm a, f- I'm a chameleon salamander thing. Backstabbing asshole. Nothing. Ooh, what? snap. <laughs> I what? I like Monsters University just fine. Like I, I but uh, Monsters uh Inc. That was a better one. Is mm-hmm. still is yeah, is much yeah. much yeah. better. Like the f- the very fucking end of that movie makes me cry every time watching it. Even when I was talking about it to my wife when we were on the road one time, I was just to- yeah. yes, oh my god. Like like just like just that the whole entire scene was just played so perfectly like you know he obviously missed Boo a lot like he has a one little the piece from the door like taped under his uh, clipboard on a piece of paper and it, under uh, after an undetermined amount of time Mike has been reconstructing the door um, to Boo's bedroom for after so long you know it's implied that it's taken a very long time because like you know just the fact that he went through pieces of wood to put it back yep. together and he has he has his hands all cut up, and you know there's very little score going on in the background, so you, there's already very emotionally intense, and you can tell he's nervous. And he puts a little piece in the door, and the door li- and the light above the door lights up, and then he's so like nervous and scared. He opens up the door, and you just see Sully's face. Fuck, like I'm gonna cry right now. And you just see he, he just focused on uh, Sully's face. You don't see what he's looking at. But then you you just see see or hear Boo just say say Kitty, and you just see his face light up. This is fucking a good a good scene like that. That's the scene that like I always think of when I think of Monsters University or Monsters. Yeah, Monsters well, that's Inc. a happy ending. That that was just yep. that that for me like I understand how emotional that is. That for me is the end of Toy Story three where we're yeah. so long partner. I can't. Can't cope with that right now. <laughs> but like, yeah, but Can't do Monsters that University right was just a fun <laughs> movie. It was really fun. Yeah, it was like it was like Animal House. I think it's kind of weird the ending. Like they got expelled. They actually didn't graduate. And I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. But then they still somehow got like they just had to work their way from the bottom at uh, Monsters Inc. Huh. I thought the that was cool. The- Did you see the montage in the end? Like. With their, um, I'm sure you did. Like where it shows, like, oh, they're janitors. Oh, they're male oh, yeah. people. Yeah. Oh, look, now, they're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're did you see the after credit scene? Yeah, with the slug. The slug just now oh. finally got to the first class. <laughs> That's another thing. At the end of Kick Ass 2, wait till after the credits. Okay. I've waited to the credits for after every movie. Me now. too. I yeah. do too. You never know. Fucking Iron Man started that trend. Now everyone expects something awesome, like. Avengers style. I monster. remember, like, when Iron Man 3 came out, nobody waited till after the credits, but then Man of Steel comes out, and everyone's at the end of the credits, and then nothing's at the end of Man of Steel, and everyone's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I sat around for this, and Man of Steel had long-ass credits. Okay, <laughs> though, I, I have a question. You guys stayed around for the end of the Man of Steel credits, right? No, because I knew beforehand that there's nothing right. after that. And, did you, no, Andrew? Same same reason. Okay, at the end of the credits, at the end of the score... There's this little thing that goes, uh oh, and I don't know what that is, and I don't know if that's a lo- a thing on the logo that's being shown. It's not part of the score. I want to know if that's a thing. What? What do you mean? Like this little voice at the end of the credits goes, uh oh, and it ends. What? Yeah. Are you sure that's like now that was actually part of the movie? I I cleaned or so was there many. Some, I cleaned was that together some... so many times. That yes, that was. I didn't know if it was part of maybe a logo, 
Or here, let me Google it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Keep, t- keep talking about Monsters U. Um, yeah, Monsters University was just a really fun movie. I mean, I still don't quite understand why why they had to go to school to learn how to scare. It always seemed like kind of more like on the job training type of thing, or more like maybe like a uh, on the job class, mm-hmm. not like a whole university. Like it just seemed kind of it just seemed kind of like a. Oh, I would I would have much rather seen a sequel. Well, it's kind of like Tiny Toons. I wonder. Uh, remember remember Tiny, Tiny Toons. Tunes. Yeah, of okay, course. Okay, well, same, same concept. He doesn't remember know. Tiny Toons. Yeah, well... But still... I had to figure out something to do. I, I like the pig. <laughs> the weird fucking pig. Um, yeah. It, it was kind of sad towards the end when uh, Mike was trying to scare the camp kids and he just couldn't do it and finally coming to realize, like, he just cannot scare and that all, oh. but like if I was one of those uh, campers or policemen that would go that went to the into that uh, 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 little cabin and that shit was happening, I would have been the first one out the <laughs> fucking door. I can't handle that kind of stuff. I can't handle that. Okay, last episode when you're telling those ghost stories, I had a hard time walking out. Really? Stairs. I'm oh not kidding because we just moved here. I'm n- I'm so unfamiliar with the, my surroundings mm-hmm. here. And with dark, I can't see with anything that's in front of me. And like ghosts, the idea of ghosts and paranormal stuff happening around me terrifies the shit <laughs> out of me. In one in one of my old places, um, where the I basically like had my office in the basement in the finished basement, there's a patio door that was down there, had no shades or anything down there. So most of the time, I was sit, sitting there in the dark, and there's a huge ass patio door next to me. I could not see it damn thing outside, and that terrified me. Huh. So, your ghost story. <laughs> but wait, yeah, we you owe, you owe us a ghost story this week. Oh, jeez, I do? I forgot all about that. Mm-hmm. Yep, every, every week. Every week. I don't have that many ghost stories. Yeah. <laughs> well, until you run out anyway. Alright, why did you look up the thing? The place yeah. of the thing? No one knows what it is, but everyone's like, yeah, it's at the end of all the prints. <laughs> is it like a girl voice? No, uh, the description given was it's just a young child saying, uh-oh. That's so weird. Yeah, I don't know what it is. That's so fucking... No, we'll look for it on the DVD release. Maybe maybe it was maybe it was like actually like some crazy Easter egg. Like something like one line from a comic book. Oh, another thing about Man of Steel. Brian Cranston might play Lex Luthor in that. Yeah, that's so awesome. All right, uh, you will remember America. his name. <laughs> Say my name. All right. What were we doing? I don't know. We covered all the movies. Uh, Monsters, University, Iron Man, Star Trek. We got them all. I think we cover. I think we got covered yeah. them all. We got them. Andrew. Yeah. Ghost story what time. What about mail? And here's the mail that never fails. That's okay. next. After okay. your ghost story. You gotta contribute a little bit of something, something here and now. Mm. You can't just show up and be pretty. That doesn't cut it anymore. That's for me. Yeah, well, doesn't cut for everyone else. Everyone else. Huh, I, I, God, you put me on the spot here, because I... Like... <laughs> Something, I don't know, you kind of teased something at the end of last week. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. We could go into questions and if he remembers it then. Yeah, I'll do questions. Give me time to think about okay. this. Okay. You mean give you time to make up a story? No, I just, you know, I'm just that, I wasn't even thinking about it at all. You know? Mm-hmm. How convenient. No. Some are a little too personal. You questions so why? I don't want to tell that. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Alright, so are we ready for questions? Yes, please. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so the first question is from 
Will Carmack. And it says, Hey guys, Will here again. Jesse, why rape? Why not? Wyatt, why are you sometimes mean to Jar Jar? I don't know why. And stop slapping the dick on Jesse. He goes on to say, Remember that music that played when Peter Park, when Peter was looking at the mask poster, so I was about to scoop what? up some corn to put on my mashed potatoes, then that music played, then and got some bacon bits and cheese, then I what? poured all three on them and they tasted so damn good. Go ahead and try it and tell me that's a taste PLZ or else I won't watch Primecast anymore. That's all I have for now. Well, but damn, we better do it. it up. Thanks, guys. What am I even I supposed to that. do? I don't that get it. That sounds disgusting. I could not follow any of that. What was the recipe again? Okay, so that was the that was the biggest run-on sentence if I've ever heard one. I'm not I'm not reading oh. it again. Okay, so he goes <laughs> on to say in another email, "Hey guys, we'll hear you for another time." Annie, I'm guessing that's me. How would you react to Nathan? To okay, he says Hathan. To Hathan or in any episode of Adventure Time? I don't know. That'd be cool. I prefer his face over his voice. I. I like Nathan Fillion. Get over it. Jesse, is there, uh, is there an SSJ builds Jet Viacon or not? Or not? Cause I, yeah. one of his arms or legs are gonna snap off. I forgot if there's one. So if you can tell me where it is, cause when I searched it, there was no results. Under my SSJ builds uh, playlist. Jesse, can you ha have me as a friend on Facebook? He said Facebook. Uh, my profile no. pic is me with a cheesy smile and a gray hoodie in no. the back. Please, 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 pretty, please, with a Fort Max size cherries on Holy top. crap. No. Now you have I to only have, only have I only have personal friends yeah. and family on Facebook. Even me and Jesse are, are not friends on Facebook. It's not It's not personal. <laughs> not yet, anyway. It, it would be personal if you had come down to Cincinnati, but... But... That ain't... <laughs> Jesse, why rape? Yeah, why what's rape? So good about it. That's so fucking creepy. What's what's not good about it? Jesse, like those short vids. Try and do a bulletproof Twinkie. What? Andy, I'm sorry, I don't have enough candy for you. I'm always at you and you guys. You can accept me being sorry. No. Okay. Annie, was John Rotzenberger in Monsters University? Yes. Guys, would are you gonna get Voyager class Springer and Blitzwing and or Fallout Cybertron Time class Metroplex? Yes, we already got, got those. I didn't get Metroplex. All the yet. above. We've already talked about this. Jesse, I want you to see how he stacked up with your Fort Max. Guys, do you like? Okay, I'm not. I'm not actually reading that one out loud. We can't actually answer that. Um, Again? What is uh, it? I'll, t I'll type it to you guys. We. I, okay. We, we've talked about this before. Us three. We we know. Um. We actually, for PR, quote unquote, stupid PR reasons, we we're not gonna answer questions. Yeah, yet. no, 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 um, no. Jesse, I want more McGangbang vids. Jesse, which other Prime Megatron will you get? Darkness or Darkest? Which one <sighs> is better? But if there were, if you don't get the fucking Darkness, he said fucking, the fucking <laughs> Darkness Megatron, because all almost the whole figure is fucking Chrome. I want to have it, but I found out my Chrome toys can get messy. That's what she said. I don't know what that means. What? I don't know. Guys, do you still want a do you still want Rosie back in TF four or with or without Lincoln Park? Please tell me. I don't give a fuck about Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Lincoln Park, I like them kind of still. So um I like her just based on her accent because I have a thing for British accents. Guys, do you watch High School of the Dead? I saw last year it was amazed by the show and it was almost over. I quoted Thor not instead of another it instead of another it was more so if any of you saw it n or not please see it. it's so fucking good i don't like high school of the dead i think I've it's never heard of that it's an anime is it? of a bunch of high school students mainly girls in really skimpy slutty outfits with their boobs falling out fighting zombies kind of it's really grim dark and stupid j-horror not stupid j i like j-horror but it's bad j-horror i don't like it at all i don't like over sexualized anime girls um the show isn't that good. I don't like it. I think it's fine if you like it. I think if you're mature about it, it's fine. But mm, if you're just in it for the boobs, uh, there's another branch of anime called something else. Jesse, back in your dogs and automobiles, I meant both episodes and you guys are arguing. We argue every episode. Yeah, it doesn't narrow down much. No, it doesn't. 
<laughs> Guys, narrows it down you... to maybe like one other episode that could not Whatever. be. Why it's not in it. This episode. <laughs> yeah. Guys, can you do an episode of Primecast on 28th of February? Because I want something to put a smile on my face and makes me have something to listen to and laugh to on my birthday. Maybe. It depends on our schedules. We have lives as well. We're sorry, but yeah. It's September. That's kind of looking far ahead, but maybe. We don't even play in the week ahead. No. Um, I guess that's impossible. all I have to say. Keep making me laugh. Make sure you have a good time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. From his brother. From uh, his brother, Harry Carmack. Car- Harry Carmack. Hi, guys. Harry with nothing but something for Wyatt to groan over and Andrew to laugh at. Jesse, can you work your magic so you can see this? I looked at this a few days ago, and I just thought, God fucking damn it. I know what it is. Jesse, I don't know if you'll be able to show this, but if you can't, it is the cast of the show Castle, which is a Nathan Fillion show, done up as My Little Ponies. I don't know who created this. I don't like that person, though. I don't get it. Like, what's huh. Up? Interesting. They just look like fucking ponies. Okay, so I'm gonna read this other one from Will. <laughs> this is the last one. Okay. That we have from him. Guys, I can't sleep thanks to you guys. I was one time sleeping when I thought I saw a slender woman coming to me, but she wanted some strawberries, and I showed and showed me her boobs, and I saw the this face while I was showering. No one was there, just me and my Pepsi. So. That way, <laughs> me and my Pepsi, stall. your Pepsi's a sentient the being with steam, you. And I saw this woman's arm out of the steam. God, I can't fucking sleep. Then the next day, I saw this lesbo couple. Okay, that's derogatory. I don't like that. Don't say the term lesbo. That's fucked up. Saw this couple walking to the Transformers aisle while I was there, and they were um, they were there after me. I got what's that? I saw them. Uh, time I put back FOC. That's all. Eighteen. I can fucking say I just scared right fucking now. Okay, you don't have to say fuck every other word and derogatory, derogatory ter- terms like lesbo and queer and racial slurs. Don't send us those because they piss me off. What about if they're from uh, the planet Lesbonia? Well, that didn't express that, but seriously, <laughs> Lesbonia. there's no need for that. Take me there, please. <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with <laughs> Take me there. Okay. Andrew, I'll straighten them out. Andrew, you're such a. Oh, I Andrew, can't. Andrew, you're such a pervert. That's all take me there. Me. Take me right there, right now. All right. Please take so, me out of this shithole state. <laughs> take me to that planet now. This shithole. <laughs> Our bags are packed. Hey, lads, on JK Productions again. In case you three forgot, Andrew. Andrew is to say that you owe us one last ghost story. Number one. What are some shows slash movies? That you told your friends to watch but ended up regretting. That you told your friends. That they told us. I don't re- I don't know why I would tell someone to watch something in the Andromeda. And I regretted telling them to watch it. I, I told my friend to watch Breaking either. Bad. I told my friend to watch Breaking Bad. He's watching it. That's about all I got. What do you mean regretting it though? I don't know. Because that was. Just answer it. Have you, ever, have you ever told anyone to watch a show? And have they done it? Oh, plenty of times. I told someone to watch uh, Arrested Development, and I kind of regret it because they thought it was like they didn't give it a chance. I'm like, great, so I wasted my time trying to tell you about this great show. <laughs> there was a show called Andromeda that um, I liked. How that much that are sucked. Transformers in the U.S.? In the U.K., MP Soundwave was 120 pounds, and what I'm wondering is, I got the same deal as you guys did. Um, That's okay, like 240 dollars, so I think. It's all yeah, it's almost double. It's it's almost double what we pay, though. Like we use the same. 1.5 percent. So, like, yeah. But, yeah, it's awkward converting pounds to uh, dollars. Three. It's, uh, yen is easier for me, at least. Um, has anything unexplained ever happened to your collection? Something randomly falls, something breaks out of touching, something misplaced uh, without it being taken, etc. One thing I remember that nobody's in my room around 2340, which is, I'm 1140? Um, a whole bunch of Legos just fell apart my shelves. I wonder if they like kind of fell over or like they just like all popped apart and just kind of dropped. That'd um, be creepy. I don't know. Like my um my fans project last chance. I had seen this happen to other people's, but a crack just randomly appeared on mine's windshield. Two cracks actually. That sucks. But I mean, figures fall off my shelves all the time. 
It's just placement. Uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, same here. Meh. Alright. Um, I'm tired, I'm sorry. Keep up the good work, lads, and uh, please, more scary stories on the podcast last episode with Bloody Fantastic. Yes, Andrew. Yeah, no Our pressure. Our says, don't forget about Andrew's other untold ghost story. Slash experience. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, Matt Schill, Austin Tucker, sends in more questions. Uh, this is our last email. Yo, guys, it's me, Austin Matt Schell, 23, back for more questions. Number one. When was your favorite time exploiting a BOGO buy one get one deal? Never. Um, I usually don't ever catch those. Me neither. I caught one Christmas last year to finish up my, uh, uh, uh not Stunticons, Combaticons. That's about it. That's the last time I remember. Um, number two, for Jesse, what was your favorite Met- Metal Gear Solid parody? On another note, have you seen Metal Gear Awesome by Ego Raptor? What was my favorite what? Metal Gear Solid parody. Um,. I don't like parodies on Metal Gear Solid. I take that shit seriously. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, for Andrew, if you have Monsters of the Universe Classics, Masters of the Universe Classics, Hero, what color gem do you have in his staff? I've never been able to get that figure. <laughs> no, he's right about that because it comes with uh, purple, green, I, that same ex- or red. Same reaction. And... What? You don't know until green. you it's open it up good. and then you find out what color it is. Um, but I've n- never been able to get my hands on Hero. I wish I could. For Wyatt, for Wyatt, yes, I didn't forget you. So with that line of little I didn't forget you reminds me of like a grandpa coming into town like, oh, I have gifts for all the kids and don't worry, <laughs> I didn't forget you. That's what it reminds me of. Thanks. Thank meaning, you meaning I picked this up at the last second. Yeah, meaning it was in the gift shop. Here's a snow globe. Of St. Louis, um, I actually have one of those for my dad when he went on a trip to St. Louis. It's funny. Do you have any opinion on Akiba Ranger yet? No, I've not gotten around to watching it. I've been barely keeping up with Wizard, and I'm still having to catch up on Kia Uh And I'm gonna have a hell. I'm having a hell of a time, uh, even fishing my way back through Forza. I'm I'm bad with shows. Um. Number six, aside from higher prices, what are some of the biggest dick moves you've seen when people scalpers resell figures and other stuff? When people stack 20s of the rare figure and post the picture on eBay saying buy these. Dog, that's such a dick move. And then they flaunt it. Like, like, hey, buy this because this, like, yeah. When, when they, I don't know. When they do that. Um, anyone else? Selling Masterpiece Soundwave more than the Japanese one. That's a dick yeah. move. I think if it's ten dollars more, it's not that bad because I mean you're getting cassettes with that. Like in the so. two to three hundred dollar range. No. Yeah, I don't that's get what why. I, I don't get why. Time. Yeah. Hasbro's Masterpiece Grimlock is three hundred dollars now. Oh that's my messed God. up. Yeah. That's a figure I really. That's a figure I really really want as well, and I'm not putting that money on it. That was eighty bucks when it came out. Yep, I remember seeing one of them in the store, and I asked for it. And I couldn't didn't have the money then, and my dad said that he never ever saw it again. And I was like, yeah, I bet you didn't. Oh well, that was a loss that year. It's a loss. Um, has there ever been an incident where you bought something for pretty cheap, and upon researching on said item, it turned out to be worth more than you what you paid for? Um, I didn't discover until a couple months ago that I have a really kind of rare Spider-Man action figure that goes for uh, about ninety dollars. And I bought it for like eight a long time ago. It's the McFarlane's Marvel Legends Spider Man. It's the black one. Not necessarily a toy, but I did buy a black label uh, PlayStation Final Fantasy VII for like ten dollars. And but then that ga- that game can easily go for over a hundred bucks. Um, I think I have something else, but I don't remember. Also, I'm glad I got the Pacific Rim figures when I did, because BBTS had them for $53 for the set. Now they have them for 70 for the set. Oh my god. So. Yeah, how much is that when you got it? 53 mm. So it's average retail. Now they're just... Um, number eight, and his final question. 
But yeah. Number eight is final question is, have you guys seen the scientifically accurate cartoon openings for Spider-Man, DMNT, and DuckTales in the Animation Domination High Def YouTube channel? Well, that'll do it for about this time around. Keep up what you guys are doing, and later. Thanks, man. No, but I'm interested. Appreciate the questions. I haven't seen those. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen those. We'll check them what, out. What are, what are they called? It's um, the realistic cartoon openings for Spider-Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and DuckTales. It's on the anima Animation Domination YouTube channel. Realistic cartoon opening. Yeah, check that out now. Dang it. I have to look it up later because I don't see anything. Yeah. All right. Um. Anything else, guys? A or link would have been useful. It's okay. FYI, next time. Uh, there is not one. It's okay, Austin. I forgive you. It's just. Type in an type in animation domination. You'll find it on the list. Did you think of a ghost story yet? Not a good one. You said he had like a bunch of I know, of good and ones. it's like. <sighs> I'm just not prepared. You weren't prepared, prepared last time, but you came off of like two or three I know, ones those were my best on the ones. spot. <laughs> Tell them again. You're kind of letting me down here, man. I've no. Really? You didn't uh, find it? No, I did. Okay. Is that it for questions? Yep. Go story, Andrew. <sighs> okay. Um. There have been several times that I've been to places. Um. Uh, I've been to. Well, I got I got two for you. I'll share one that's a little bit personal, but I don't want anybody making fun of it because it's okay. a lot to me. But the first one. Um, Last thing I do is judge. Huh? I never right, well, judge. Um, the first one was I I worked at a uh, public library when I was going to school. Oh my God! You Sadly. did. Sadly. Just kidding. And I'll tell you. Um, the people that I work with were very superstitious, and they refused to go to the fourth floor of this library because they claimed it was haunted. And I thought it was just stupid because, you know, who in their right minds would haunt a library? And so I would be the only one who would uh, put things away on the fourth floor. And one day I had a lot of stuff to bring up there and I had to literally just like make somebody come with me up there and this floor is not open to the public it's just sort of like a storage level for older books and so we went up there and this this guy just wouldn't shut up about it he's like I hate this place I hate this floor and I told him like you know we're just we're just putting books back into storage we're not like gonna live here you know and we weren't there for more than two or three minutes and this was during a hot summer day and that floor got ice cold and he started freaking out and I'm like just shut up you know and so I was trying to play it cool and he's freaking out and about the temperature and the walls got cold and he felt cold and he didn't like it and all this shit so he had enough and left me by myself up there and I hated him for that and I just continued on my work and then I heard a big thump and uh, this whole row of books that I had just put on the shelf just came crashing down behind me and there's just no one there but me. So that was more than enough to just scare the shit out of me. So. I Are see. you guys alive? Yeah, okay. I'm alive. So. Is Wyatt alive? Yes. 
Did he fall yes. asleep? Oh, yes. Okay. No, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. That, that's how lame that story was, but it really did happen, and it's doesn't sound very eventful, but if you were there, it would totally freak you out. Mm-hmm. So the scientifically accurate Ninja Turtles is hilarious. <laughs> Wyatt. Huh. Wait, I'm gonna post this link to this v fucking video. It is awesome. This call's been going on for 56 minutes, and I feel like I disconnected just like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> this video, this audio has been recording for over two hours. Yeah. So that's I'll watch that after the end of the show. Okay, this that is absolutely hilarious. That's great. Anyway, password... So I'll tell you the next one next week, alright? Okay, yep, all save right. it. Sounds good. Password? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Mm. Andrew, your pick. I'm trying to not pick a lame one. Ghost library? No, that's lame. You more. No, that's not nice. So. It's episode seventy. It's episode seventy. Can we play a, a words off seventy? That seventy show. The one. <laughs> the one that's after sixty nine. <laughs> yeah, the one that's after sixty nine. There we go. Sixty nine two. Sixty one mm -hmm. plus nine. Ep episode seventy sixty nine two. Hey, why is six afraid of seven? Because seven eight nine. <laughs> yeah. I I got it. I got it. I got it. Hmm. Fifty Shades of You're a Slut. It's a little long. But no. still. Relevant. Oh. Rel relevant to our conversation. Congratulations, Charlie. Who Fifty Shades of Soundwave. Hanan. On your cast. Hanan. Alright. If you listen Hanan. to what? <laughs> if you listen to the whole episode, type in Fifty Shades of You're a Slut in the comment section. Let us know that you listen to the whole episode and that makes me happy. When I don't see much of that, it makes me a very sad hand panda. We're really classy here. I think my buzz is my buzz is wearing <laughs> off, and I'm just getting sleepy. Um, I'm sleepy too. Let's go. Mm. Yeah, you can follow me at Twitter at twitter.com/ssjautobot. Instagram me too, ssjautobot. Uh, subscribe to me here on YouTube. Just click the subscribe button above this video. Uh, I am currently at ten thousand three hundred subscribers. Lucky bastard. Yeah. Lucky. So I I, th I like yeah. to think I didn't even notice like I crossed the ten thousand mark until recently. I was like, holy shit! But yeah, thank, th thank, thanks. I like to thank the academy of losers, and uh, and I'm the king of them all. Thank you. So I like to thank myself because I could I could have done it without me. Anyway, all right, go on. Um. Follow me on Twitter at Anconvader, and you can uh, subscribe to me on YouTube at Anconvader as well. I'm not at 10,000 subscribers. And you can follow me on Twitter at Sportimus Prime, and follow me on my YouTube channel at Sportimus, and I have 2,230 subscribers. Wow. I I have like a thousand and some. Everyone, go follow go follow you, them on YouTube. And Andrew has. Has the weirdest, most obscure reviews of the stuff that you wouldn't care about. Hey, I'm improving. But like, like Lego, the Lone Ranger Lego set. I mean, come on. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That movie was so bad. I, I have the NECA figures too, which I regret buying. Why? Why would take you off his it? mask? Take Why off his mask. It's hilarious. Really? Okay. Yes. His oh eyes. yeah, I heard about that. So you, so you have a Johnny. Johnny Depp Tonto? Yeah, I think I'm gonna burn him. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> um what was I saying? The Lone Ranger. Okay. Hey, everyone, thank you for listening. Wyatt, Andrew, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Yep, we'll see everyone next week. Woot. Woot. One more. Later.
Come on, Audacity. I don't know if my recording's actually turned off yet. My Audacity's being a bitch. I think it's 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 still recording. Come on, don't just please if you're gonna crash, do it after I hit stop. For the love of Christ. That's still recording.